time for those most famous words in motorsports. Hey, three, two, radio! Time for another edition of Race 22 Ra Ra Radio. In-depth coverage of all your favorite short track racing action from all perspectives. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Race 22 Radio is hosted by Race22.com founder, Mr. Langley Austin. Come here, I'm gonna eat you! I'm bigger than you, I'm higher in the food chain! Get in my belly! Come on! Race 22 Radio is co-hosted by Performance Center Racing Warehouse President, Mr. Roger Johnson. You just keep your foot on the gas and drive right by him on the outside. You told me nobody goes to the outside on turn four. If you go to the outside, you can hold it. With special co-host, Corey Latham. So sit back, buckle in, hold on tight, because Race 22 Radio is coming at you at full throttle. your host, Mr. Langley Austin. All right, guys, here we are back with Race 22 Radio live from the Performance Center Racing Warehouse in Statesville, North Carolina. Got uh, my co-host, well, I got one of them anyway, so uh, Roger Johnson's over here uh, to my right. And as you can see on your screen tonight, it's not just a black screen. I'm sure some of you guys are thankful for that, and I don't know if you're thankful for seeing CE's uh, face or not, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but no uh, We don't have his mic on, so he's talking, but you can't hear him. But, um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, no show, Corey Latham uh, is not over here in the seat beside of Roger, so not sure where he's at. I don't know if uh, he was afraid that. Uh, C would give him an ass whipping tonight or what but whatever it is he's not here so uh roger what do you think man here goes another one yeah I, week five week five uh, i mean i've read multiple times that we weren't going to make it to week two nice so. uh, yeah i like the feedback yeah yeah i mean but i do think there's a lot of people uh you know enjoying uh enjoying the show i uh, had a lot of really good feedback um, glad to actually have an image on the screen for people to see now, and hopefully uh, we'll transition into video here for too long. Yeah, pretty quick. Uh, got some new mics here tonight, so hopefully we sound a little bit better. Uh, been working, uh, you know, we had uh, eight or nine year old uh, equipment before, uh, so now we're uh, kind of transition, spending a little bit of money here and there. So you're good at that. Well, uh, that's uh, my wife. My good. wife is better <laughs> at me at that than me. So uh, you know, what are you gonna do? You know what I mean? <clears throat> Um, got a lot of people uh, chiming in already and, uh, you know, getting tuned in to uh, the broadcast here. Um, see Randy Weaver and uh, uh, Tim McDougald and uh, a bunch of different people. Uh, McDougald needs a T-shirt. We can probably uh, find a way to hook you up there. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> uh, Randy Weaver said that uh, with C there, we got to talk uh, about old Rayvon. Come on. So, <laughs> Come on. All right, well, let's go ahead and bring uh, C into the conversation here. So, uh, you know, he had something to say a minute ago, and we didn't let him, but uh, we'll let him talk now. C, welcome to uh, Race 22 Radio. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, man. God, uh, Does that sound okay? Yeah, man. You oh, sound okay. good. Cool, sound good. Cool, cool. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I know it sounds like Kermit the Frog sometimes. But, you know, Kermit the Frog. Like pa I, I get Patrick like a, Mahomes. Yeah, the Patrick Mahomes kid. I got, like, three people, like, I see his first time playing on Monday night, three people text me, like, you sound like Patrick Mahomes. I'm like, well, I'm not as rich as him right now, so let, that'd be nice. Let me guess. One of them was Ben Hammock. Uh, absolutely. I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <clears throat> Man, how you been? Uh, it's been good. Uh, it's been a great off season. Uh, not long enough, but uh, we've been just been rock and rolling, trying to buy cars and sell them and uh, enjoying life, man. I hear you. I hear you. I, I, I know you was trying to sell a van to the guy over here to the right of me, but, you know, didn't get that done. Yeah, I mean, apparently I only had like 24 hours to find him one. Right. Like, <laughs> he was I'm in a hurry. A decision, it's over. you got to be ready right now. We, we've established that at this table, except for me, 
everybody here likes to spend money really quickly. <laughs> you know, like Doc Love over here, our producer, he likes to spend money really fast. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I got some nice stuff, man. It looks really good. Uh, yeah, we're we're upgrading a little bit here and there. We don't have cords running everywhere this week, so that's a whole lot better. We still got a few, but not nearly as many as we had, and uh, getting it all dialed in. And Man, uh, hopefully this trip to the radio show goes better than your last trip to our radio show eight years ago side of my house caught on fire while you were live on the air so. I, I, I was gone by then that, that was probably like patty ron back <laughs> no and, i think you were on air i think we were still talking to you when it lit on fire uh, okay. well i probably hit the wall too many times before it wow <laughs> too many too many concussions good day wow i respect you for saying that though i really uh, do <laughs> i respect you for saying that uh steve steve murray uh photographer down at uh, myrtle beach speedway uh jumping in here he uh he said that uh, Corey was probably out too late last night and that's probably a fact him and uh him and bobo brown were probably uh out uh playing around uh roger trying to jerk his mic off the off the table over here to do what? <laughs> well there we go that's uh we're uh, we're going downhill fast over here so <clears throat> All right, uh, I guess uh, we're going to take a check of the news here and uh, see what's been going on in, uh, in the world of racing as uh, Doc Love grabs us here. Absolutely, it's that time again. Let's dive into the news just a little bit. We got um, down in Florida, of course, the 53rd annual World Series of Asphalt Stock Car Racing uh, just went uh, raced all week long. Super late model champion, of course, Bubba Pollard. That's his first time. You know, he's a, he's accomplished so much uh, in racing. So, and I was surprised to learn that that was his first championship, won by 42 points over track regular Brad May. So good for him. You know, not really a super late model show, but he has raced some super uh, late models. Uh, Fathead Racing uh, race for him. Uh, all one time. It's all it takes. It's all it takes uh, to do that one time. And other news, Rafael Lasard is going to make his truck debut at Martinsville coming up in the first race at Martinsville. Um, he's, he you know, raced the Super Late Models for KBM. He's going to try to follow the steps of Christopher Bell, who raced late model stocks here with the uh, Cars Tour and uh, throughout uh, the southeast here. So he's hoping to follow those steps. He's going to make three starts this year. He's going to race at Dover in May and Bristol in August, but he's going to make his debut there. Uh, at Martinsville coming up in March. Other news, Race 22 Radio, we've got the Cars Tour talking about, you know, we've been talking about uh, cost-cutting measures here on the show. Uh, the Cars Tour is also going to try to do that with their $10,000 to win races. They're going to limit to four tires. You qualify, race on the tires uh, that you qualify on. I think that's a good move. I mean, I think, you know, love saving yep. people money. Absolutely love Anytime it. you can run on less tires is great. Absolutely so. love it. Yep, and for the $30,000 win at Orange County, you know, everybody's got their eyes on that. That's going to be a six-tire uh, deal. Yeah. So, does that mean? Yeah, but I think for thirty k you can justify it, right? right. Like, oh, absolutely. I mean, CEs, you're here. I mean, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's a pretty long race. Whoa. I mean, I mean, it's... I mean, why not? I mean, right. you need to add an element to it. You know, you got to give the guys a chance to work on their cars. I mean, you don't want to be stuck on the same four tires trying to race for thirty grand and right. and not I have agree. an opportunity to even do anything about it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's thirty thousand dollars. Why not? Yeah, I like the strategy for ten though. No, absolutely. Uh, their first race coming up, returning back to Southern National Motorsports Park, uh, March 9th is their uh, season opener. So I know we'll have representatives out there. This will be their fifth time there. They've had three different winners. Dick McCaskill has won twice. <laughs> no surprise uh, at that joint. Right. Uh, jo Josh B uh, Berry and Todd Gilliland uh, also has won in the Cars Tour at the uh, Southern National Raceway Park. You want to go fast? You got like, some money? I saw a hot rod for sale on Facebook of all places. You want to you want to get a fast car? It's won multiple races at South Boston, the new track record at A Speedway. Sellers Racing is selling that fast hot rod. You want to go fast? Hey, there's your one. What do you think, Roger? You, you want to buy that so you can okay. go through it with the fine tooth okay. comb? I, I don't know. I don't know what just happened. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really hanging well, That was out. for you. Somebody told me to read that for you. Okay. A little birdie. Wow. Wow. Speaking what just happened? <laughs> it spins out of control every time Doc gets the mic over here. Well, Not yeah. really sure what's going on. Yeah. Hey, that's what it's all about, man. Having fun, right? 
Uh, let's see. How about you talk about late model stock guys that have gone on and do good things? You know, I know that's what you're hoping to do, maybe. Uh, how about late model standout Matt Benedetto in the Daytona 500 led the most laps? Everybody knows that young man was there. How about that? It was really impressive for sure. How good for him. how exciting was that to see a kid that we saw what 15 jumping a late model and yeah, and now it's made the big time. Yep, it's great. It's good to see good family, good yeah. people. Oh yeah, I was thinking about his mom and dad, and we, uh, Danny uh, used to do the show with me a couple years, several years ago, a long time ago. Now at this point, uh, she used to bring brownies. She used to bring them to the track. Used to bring them to the shows all the time. So man, we loved her. That's for sure. <laughs> right. All right, guys. That's all I got. All right. We we escaped the birthday celebrations over here. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, we've given uh, Doc a hard time before the show. But uh, anyways, I guess we're going to dive right on in here with uh, CE and, you know, you guys uh, on Facebook Live. If you uh, have any questions for CE, I know uh, some of you probably will. So uh, if you do, let us uh, let us know and uh, we'll uh, we'll get a question passed on to him. Keep in mind that, uh, you know, you're a couple seconds behind us on the show. So it'll take us a few minutes to catch up with you on questions. But uh, I guess we'll dive right on in here. And I guess the biggest thing to talk about with you, CE, is uh, Martinsville, man. I mean, when you come in to the radio show, and you're you're the guy man you you won the last time out at martinsville i mean first off i mean how how did it feel to get a victory there i know you'd come you know close you've been running really good there and and then finally man you grab one it's got to be cool yeah i mean i've been going there for 13 years and you know you you always go you always prepare and you always get everything ready to the best of your ability to to try to win the race but you know there's 80 something guys there trying to do the same thing so i mean the, the odds are never in your favor um but, you know, like I said, there's a lot of things that happened. You know, we obviously didn't have the best car. You know, we had a really good car in the first half, and then we kind of just adjusted ourselves out between, you know, the, the two-tire deal. We really didn't pick the right strategy there. But uh, we kind of got back on track and uh, for that second adjustment at 175 and made some headway back to the front, and then all hell just broke loose and uh, for – an hour and a half yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, typical uh, martinsville yeah. typical martinsville and uh you know i saw you know josh loser lead to, to peyton on a restart and um i think everybody kind of got the memo there that that's how it was going to go down and um i knew that last restart that uh that was my only chance to you know try to win the race you know i mean obviously it was going to race out as long as it could but you know to really have a shot at it, and just in case you know they did all crash in turn one like they did right i had to be the first guy to lead and Man, that was uh, that had my name written all over it. To be on the outside, coming to you know three Perfect laps to scenario. go. I mean, that is like that's what I was made to do was was to right. take that restart. That's and, awesome. Um, you know, it, it's it's amazing. You know, the the clock still chimes every 15 minutes. It, everybody <laughs> everybody thinks stuff. it would get annoying, but it's really not. It's really really <laughs> cool, and uh, it's something I'm gonna have forever. You know, I, I one of my buddies like, "Are you gonna go to Martinsville again?" I'm like, "Yeah, probably." He goes, "Man, you just need to get a motor home, go on the back stretch, take your clock, and park it in the grass with you, and be like, I'm good, guys. Like y'all have fun." But that'd be awesome. Still race, but that'd be awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd be a lot less expensive, but uh, <laughs> but sure. no, I mean. Like I said, I know my family's been going there for 40-something years, and uh, to have a Falk finally bring a grandfather clock home meant a lot to our family. So that was really cool. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. One thing, you know, you talked about knowing that, you know, at the end of the race where you needed to be the first guy to the line. When you're sitting in the car, I mean, when did you know? Was it when, you know, Peyton got the lead there? you know with josh is that when you knew that that was something you'd have to do at the end of the race if you were in position to do it yeah because i i came on the radio and asked my spotter how the heck did josh lose the lead of this race i mean he's been mm-hmm. crushing us all night and uh they said peyton beat him to the line and the cost should come out and that's how they did it did it and you know really i lost some spots in the middle of that race too that doing the same thing you know, like, you know you line all up for the double file and then you and then you you know go off to turn one they crash and it's like how did i lose a spot and that whole deal because yeah. we've never really experienced that i mean at the local level they kind of go i mean back another lap they don't ever try to yeah but use traditionally that at martinsville that's been an issue too right like i'm not dogging it but well i don't think actually most people knew that that was an issue previously at oh yeah tommy lemons is the only one that's told me that he knew that going into the race he said uh, it's that way every year yeah oh, it, it, it the is middle a, gets so clustered it just well they, 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 there's no time to go back and, and look at yeah. it. i mean the the computer all they have is the computer there to look at the last lap and that's yeah. what they go off of so i mean it has been the same at martinsville for yeah. a while on that part but it's not something like at south boston or at langley right, sure, or right, sure. they go back 
all the way, you know, they redo the cone and the whole nine yep. yards that then, but there's no time to do that at Martinsville. So, I mean, like I said, I knew once Josh lost the lead there that, you know, if I ever had that opportunity, you know, I needed to make sure that I just burned every living dog <laughs> out of my clutch to, to get the best restart of my life. Right. I mean, if that's the way that, you know, you think it could come down to getting a victory, I mean, you got to and you did. So it worked out perfect. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, one one thing, um, I, I know you guys probably know Chris Fleming, uh, mm-hmm. showstopper at yeah. Bowman Gray. Mm-hmm. Um, well, now he's just a racer. I actually work with him at the auctions every day, mm-hmm. and he lost his dad this weekend. So I just wanted to say, you know, thinking about you, Chris, and hope everything's okay. Definitely, definitely. Didn't know about that. That's uh, hate that for him for sure. And, yeah. Uh, He's a good guy. He's a very entertaining guy. Yeah, <laughs> He's very a entertaining for a guy. Reason, yep. man. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Um, speaking of Martinsville, um, which you've already answered one of my questions about knowing that uh, the, the controversy that surrounded, you know, that finish that way got nothing to do with you. You just happened to be in the right spot. Well, what did you make of all that, you know, the crowd reaction and, and just how people took, took it forever? <clears throat> um, well, like I said, I mean – as a fan, I can understand not getting your money's worth there. I right. mean, believe me, you know, the last thing I ever thought about winning Martinsville was, you know, by winning by 60 foot on a, on a drag race to right. start finish line. Believe me, you know, I, I've had, you know, stayed up at night, you know, having my spotter, you know, all right, you got the white there, you come to the checkered, you know, it's all yours <laughs> or whatever. But, you know, right. that's not the way it worked out. I mean, they, the rules, you know, we went three overtimes and, you know, that we had to end the race. I mean, we couldn't just keep running, you know, 80 laps of you know overtime to to finish the race i mean it's just it's just pointless so right. i mean you saw it i mean the arca race is finally you know smartened up and and and, and ch- calmed theirs down so i mean i i get the fans you know, felt like they got shorted but yeah. you know it was a great great day of racing all the way around between all the heat races and the first 150 laps were awesome i mean it was yeah, we it raced was. really really hard and it's just you know it just comes down to the end and everybody's Everybody wants it. A lot of, well, I'm not going to say a lot. Several drivers feel as if that uh, competition caution, if it didn't come, you know, the race would be different at the end. I mean, we've seen that, you know, when they had it at, what, 25 laps and, you know, they still went back 15 laps, green flag, and then started wrecking. So, I mean, do you think that plays into it or do you think it's just what's going to happen at Martinsville every year no matter what? I think 2015 they said they were not going to have a competition caution because I think, like, Dale Jr. had said, yeah. like, man, we, I'm tired of that competition caution. Right. So, like, Clay really listened and said, right. we're not going to have one. And with 10 laps to go, guess who was the competition caution? Me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, look, I mean, we're not trying to kill each other. We're not trying to, you know, tear up our race cars. We all work really too, work way too hard on them to just to end up in the heat. But, you know, we are trying to win Martinsville. We only get one shot out of it every year. And, um, you know, it's just it's just a byproduct of that. Right, right. I mean, you I, saw I, it last night on TV. I mean, it, t- it took them an hour and 20 minutes to to run, you know, 10 laps. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. I, I mean, everybody wants, wants to win Daytona. Everybody wants to win Martinsville. Right. So, I mean, and that is, for late model stock guys, I mean, that is Daytona. Yep. It's bigger. I mean, it really right. is. I mean. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It, it definitely means more. I mean, I, I've got to imagine for you, you know, when, you know, like, I was typing up, you know, like the little press release that we put out about the show. I was thinking about, you know, 2018 Martinsville winner. You know, to be that guy, it's got to be the coolest thing to have that said before your name. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, the circumstances are the circumstances. You know, like I said, we were there all night long. We were we were second and halfway, so I mean, we didn't fluke into anything. Uh, we were just in the right position, the right opportunity. But it's so funny, like two weeks later, um, I went to a go-kart race to watch my buddy race, and I had a guy come to me. He goes, man, you sure did wear him out of Martinsville? I'm like, yeah, man, I sure did. <laughs> I mean, nobody's going to remember in, you know, 40 years what it's going to be. Sure. But guess what? I'm going to have that grandfather clock the rest of my life, and uh, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I agree, 100%. I mean that's uh, that's one thing. I mean once you're once you get the trophy, it's over. Yeah, so they print your talk name on a t-shirt, anything. whatever. I mean, it, right? It, it's there forever. Right, no doubt. Uh, you know, you've raced for so many years now. Uh, you know, and now you're a part-time guy. What what's the difference for you coming into a race season, um, being a part-time guy versus how you used to race so much in the past? Um, it's definitely a lot more difficult. You know, I'd say you know the years of like. 2007 to, to 13 you know we were really really on it and you know I had I had some great guys you know crew chief for me Phil Warren Dwayne Skinnell Sammy Houston you know those guys really brought their A games you know for me every day and you know 
we get up in the morning, we work on race cars till six o'clock in the afternoon, and and then you know, we go have supper, and you know that was it. And now I get up and and work. Uh, you know, like tomorrow I'll go get up and be out of the house by six thirty, and I'm at Statesville Auto Auction at seven thirty, and you know I'm looking at cars for for two hours, and then I'm trying to buy them, and uh, then drive all the way to Concord and work that auction, and then about five o'clock I've I'm you know I'm done with you know my real job. And I can work on my car for a couple hours, and then you know I want to be home. You know I want to be home, spend time with my wife and, and my family. So uh, it's definitely tougher. You definitely have to prioritize your day. You know, just kind of make a plan of like, all right, well, I don't really need to go to SRI today to buy parts or go by Rogers to get you know tr truck arm shock mounts. You know, I mean, you know, on on Tuesday I can do that. Monday I you know I'm all the way over here. So you really have to you know plan the day. And like I said, just it, it, it is tough because you know I am doing it by myself a lot more, but uh, you know I still love it. I still love late mile soccer racing. I love putting these cars together, and I, I love going to compete. And uh, but for a long time, I had to do it on someone else's schedule. I had to, you know, you're caught up in national points and track points and mm -hmm. sponsor obligations and this and that. And now I feel like I can race on my own time. You know, if I'm not 100% ready, I don't have to go. Like All I mean, right. it, and that's really empowering on on a racer and you know some because for a long time you're kind of just like oh we got to go you know we got to do everything we we got you know drop this doll you know can't go to this you know you know thing for my wife or go to this thing for my parents or you know for my buddies or getting together and playing poker on wednesday because you know i gotta work on the car but now you know i can do some of those things and it's pretty empowering but i still love racing I, you know it's definitely harder to compete at this level now that it's you know it's so damn competitive but um I, I love late mile stock racing. I, I, I hope I can do it for a while. Absolutely. And, and we need you. You know what I mean? I mean, you're the kind of guy you got, you know, that's one thing people, I have had people ask me, so, man, I don't really like C. Uh, why do you like that guy? Like, I, I <laughs> Get in line. People, I tell people, I, I'm like, because <laughs> when people say that, I'm like, I like C. You know, we ain't always got along. We ain't always agreed on everything. No, no. But you, but I, li I like you because you bring a different personality to the table. You, you bring, you, you're not afraid to say anything. You don't really care. You know what I mean? And I like that. Uh, you need guys like that. You have to have people that are, that are going to speak up when they think something's wrong. Well, I try to. <laughs> yeah, you definitely do. I mean, without, without trying to cross over the line of you know making life difficult for myself, you know. Right. Um, but you know, like I said, I, I just try to call a spade a spade when I can. Right. You got a bunch of people jumping in here. Um, you know, on the on the chat, I'll uh, get to some of their questions here in just a minute. But you're know, going back to the part time racer thing. What what's your what have you found is your biggest challenges, and what what do you what's the pros and cons of that? I guess is what I'm asking. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, the pros of it is just, you know, having time for, you know, yourself and, you know, like I said, not being set to one schedule. Um, but I guess it is going to be different this year. I'm going to run Motor Mile full time this year. Um, mm -hmm. And plus, uh, you know, you, you still get the thrill of it. You know, you still get to go compete. And, you know, like I said, you're not tied into points. You go race for yourself and, you know, you're not really worried about all those. Other, I mean, you try to take care of the guys that are racing for points and things like that. But at the same time, those guys know you're there only there part time. So I mean, they probably shouldn't mess with you. Sure. But um, you know, and the cons of it is, it's hard to keep up with you know guys like Josh Berry and you know the Nelson Group and and Philip and and Lee just because those guys all do it full time and and you know they are on their game every week and they're constantly learning stuff on their card. You know, whether it's practice or race or and things like that and. I just don't get the, you know, it's just reps. It, right. it really is, you know. I mean, if you don't shoot a basketball, if you go from shooting a basketball every day and then stop it and only shooting it four times a year, you're probably not going to be as good at it. So, no, for sure you're not. Um, yeah, like I said, so that's the biggest thing I, I kind of fight. Um, but like I said, I try to, when I go test, I try to make everything as easy as I can to myself, mm -hmm. you know, just having a plan, having everything planned out, uh, and uh, just kind of sticking to the basics, really. All right. Uh, just to let everybody know who's listening, we're trying to uh, just get uh, dialed in on uh, sound over here. You know, things are new, and we're trying to make sure we got. I like it when you up. freak out. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. See, he's just I mean, over here talking, just watching. Like, oh my God, what are they doing? You over should here? see Langley. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> That's why we don't have video. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, so you say you're uh, running Motor Mile uh, full time this season? Yeah. So we're going to start the year. Um, I doing that season opener at Langley. Uh, you know, and then we have the Denny Hamlin race, you know, 12 days after that. And that mm -hmm. race is really important to me. You know, I won it a long time ago, but 
uh, hadn't run all that great in it since, except for last year. And so I'm just, you know, you know, I really want to try to win that race. That, that race really means a lot to me. It did a lot for me when I was younger. And, you know, I really, especially now that it's at Langley, I really want to win it. Right. Um, and all the wins, wins, track championships, the win in the Denny Hamlin race, uh, Martin, Martinsville. What was the, what was the almost... What was almost at Daytona in the late model race? Does the Martinsville solidify his racing career, or is this something else that needs to, uh, that inspires you to race? Uh, I mean, Martinsville was just, you know, it's Martinsville. It, it's it's the one we've always wanted to win. Right. And, you know, that's the one everyone's going to talk about. That's the, you know, when you walk in the door anywhere, it's like, oh, that guy won Martinsville. I mean, I went yeah. to I went to a wedding with a bunch of guys at Pitt, Stuart Haas cars, just because my wife is friend, was friends with a bride. And I yeah. knew, like, one guy there, and he's like, hey, guys, this guy won Martins with a late mile race. <laughs> right, and, and right. Really cool, and it's like. It's like a medal. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, that's it. That's yeah, what it's and supposed you can to be. stamp it to your forehead. It, it, it's it's legit. So, um, like I said, that, that, you know, the Daytona thing, you know, it had been really cool to have a trophy from Daytona, but, right. you know, it didn't work out. So, you know, used to keep crying about it. So. Uh, but when in day, when in Martinsville, that's uh, like I said, having a grandfather clock. It's you know the money's gone already. I mean, <laughs> twenty five. <laughs> the grand. money was gone before you got there. <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, my, my whole my whole career, my dad's always paid for my motors, and then after the check came from Martin, he goes, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna take some of that and pay, pay, get paid back for that motor bill." I said, "Oh man, come on!" Uh, right. <laughs> but you know, Martinsville, that clock will will be with us forever. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's the end of it. And, and chime every fifteen minutes. Yeah, that's like right. That that was <laughs> well, a good I can't. I can't too. remember. Sometimes I wind it on Saturday. Sometimes I wind it on Sunday. And that's probably more fun to anything is winding the clock. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many men that get to experience that. That's but. right. Winding one that they won, anyways. That anybody can go by. <laughs> oh, believe me, they got they got uh, up there at Ridgeway. They got them set up like, hey, you could own the clock Jimmy Johnson's got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, are you planning on uh, running any car store races this year? I don't know. Uh, I thought we may run the car store race at Motor Mile, but my guys don't really seem like they're all that, you know, they want to see how their, the season's going. And probably the only other one to be interested in is Langley. And um, I don't know if that conflicts with Motor Mile or not, so I'm not sure. I think it does. I yeah. think it does. Okay, yeah. so there you go. You answer your question. Just think it off the top of my head, though. Somebody make it. I think it's like June 1st or something, right? Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Um, uh, Dave Pascal is asking, uh, who was the number 40 Falk at Langley in the 1970s? That'd be my Uncle Joe. Um, so he was the number 40. Uh, he was track champion in 76, I believe. And he had like an orange car with the, with, with the yellow number 40 on there. And uh, I know he wore them out on Firestones like all the time. And he was, <laughs> he was like the only guy to get Firestones. And he was like, Wearing, wore him out that season and then after that everybody else kind of caught up and uh but yeah he that my uncle joe gotcha he's the same guy that owns part of uh the 32 cup car that's what i was getting ready to ask you i thought so <clears throat> um so i'll ask you the obligatory question before somebody else does why don't they give you a ride now money 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 exactly exactly yeah same is that uh, how it works same answer <laughs> really josh Berry is, that, gave is, that what, yeah, is that how it works hey i mean re- Look, I mean, it's it's not like you know, you know, some fortune, you know, for, Fortune 50 kid. Every Fortune 50 kid's gonna have, you know, you know, just take you know, ten million dollars to a big race team and and still compete. You know, you see plenty of those kids fall out of the seat and stuff. But you know, in today's market, I mean, you you have to go sell yourself because no one else is gonna do it for you. And so, I mean, the um, like I said, bringing partners along, that certainly helps helps the deal, you know, because everybody's trying to go race. I mean, it, it works out better if everybody likes you and, you know, you're a great driver, but if you don't have any money, then, it, you know, it, it's just all a fantasy. So, you know, like I said, I don't have a problem with the model today. I mean, it sucks, but at least you know what it is and you can go try to attain for it. I mean, Ryan Priest and Hemrick, I mean, they're they are right. proven, proven guys that, you know, are great short track racers that had to figure out a way to make it, and they were able to figure it out, and they, and they made it. I agree, hundred percent. I mean, that's a, uh, you know, two guys. I mean, obviously Denny, you know, found a way to make yeah, it. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, so, and uh, you know, you talked about uh, 
talked about have your past success in the Hamlin race. I mean, that, that race you won was probably not just for the end of it, but for the entire thing. It was probably the most exciting Hamlin race they've ever had. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty cool. I and mean, sometimes it like hits hits back up on YouTube, whatever. And mm -hmm. I mean, just the amount of crashes and spins oh, and man. stuff, and people getting eaten up by the boilerplate. I mean, it, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it was perfect. It was. I mean, it was it was what that showdown was all about. I mean, granted, you know, in Langley now it's really cool and it's yeah. it's very exciting, but. I mean, man, just to be able to, go, you know, some of those guys were just going down in there to, to wipe out Kevin Harvick just for right. no reason. But, you know, like I said, it was um, it was a huge event. I mean, back then it was just electric, man. It was like, it was. I mean, it was like being in one of the last coliseums, just people on top of each other, on top of the fence. I mean, they, I mean, it was people everywhere, and um, it was awesome. Do, do you think the, the difference in having it now and having it at Langley versus having it at Southside is the difference in the atmosphere? Oh, I mean, I think that – I think the atmosphere was pretty incredible last race. I mean, it didn't help that Denny stunk up the show and led 200 right, laps, right, but, right. you know, but I mean, he had a great car and he wore us out. So, um, but like I said, I mean, the, there were so many people at Langley. I mean, it, it trumped Southside by uh, double at least. Oh, so, sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, the cars were all the way in the parking lot. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of people didn't hear about it till a couple of days before, you know. Right. So I think now that people know it's coming and it's, you know, how big of a deal it actually is, you know, I think it's going to be even bigger and better this year. Well, and they probably could fit more people in the pits at Langley than they could in the entire facility at Southside. I don't know. It's still a lot of grass out there. I mean, you. Don't, I mean, <laughs> there's not whole. There's no infield walls except for the yeah. front stretch, so it might be a little sketchy to have too yeah. many people in there. I understand. I understand. Might have somebody that. wander down pit road, you know, on the back stretch or something and get run over. Uh, Mason Bailey chiming in says to bring the showdown back to Southside. Don't think that's going to happen. I, don't I think that's a thing with the track itself. No, nah, I think Bill Moss has done a great thing, and got that place, that thing locked up for sure. He's uh, he's really committed to that deal. Uh, Joshua McCraw says uh, to give a shout out to C from some of the crew. Oh, hey, Josh. Um, now the. <clears throat> The O2 that's on your car now, that's a, I guess, partnership? Or how, how does that work, I guess, with Doodle Dorico? Yeah, so um, Doodle and Aaron and Virginia Heavy Equipment, um, the car that won Martinsville, they own that car outright. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've had some great drivers, you know, before me, yeah. but we kind of got hooked up towards uh, the middle of 2017, and uh, they weren't ha very happy with their car. And, you know, I, I tried, you know, it was a really nice car. Um, and I tried working my guts out on it. We just, just didn't have much success with it. And those guys, you know, they spent a lot of money to, to you know, try to race. And uh, I was like, look, you know, if you guys want me to drive, you know, we just need to start over and, you know, build a new Hedgecock car and uh, we'll go race. Well, then, you know, all right, that's what we're doing. We're going to build a new car. You're going to race a motor mile. That, you know, that's what we're going to do. And then motor mile closed. Yeah. And um, so that took a lot of the wind out of their sails. I mean, they only live 20, 30 minutes from there. So, uh you know, like I said, I still built the car. They were still very committed to me, and I was committed to them. And uh, we took the car to South Boston for its first maiden voyage and, and finished six and led some laps. And then, you know, second time out, the car won Martinsville. And, uh, you know, so they, they're really excited. You know, like I said, I, I drive for them, and, you know, they're the car owner. And uh, yeah. But I, I work on the car. I get the car maintained and, and get it ready to go. And, uh, and we race, and, and those guys are a ton of fun, man. They love <laughs> racing so much. And... Uh, they they just want to win, you know. They're but they I mean they're they're cool with everything. They know they know how it all goes. They know how much effort gets put into it. You know the you know the financial part of it. They get all that. They've been they've been racing a long long a long, long time. time. And um, you know, like I said, they're 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 more excited than ever for for the place to open back up next year. Doodle is a personality of his own for sure. He could have his own TV show for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's great, man. He's one of my favorite people. So funny Doodle story. So like the first night I was driving for him. Uh, we were in the pits, and uh, we didn't run very good in the first race at Motor Mile. And uh, so, you know, you get, get opportunity to work on the car and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, Jackie and Buddy and all those guys, they're the officials up there. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're checking everybody out and seeing, you know, seeing what's going on. Well, Doodle has already sprung into the cooler. <laughs> and uh, I was like, Doodle, you cannot – drink that type of beverage in the pit area like you know we're still racing so if you gotta wait till after the race he goes oh, i'll be fine and then jackie <laughs> comes over i'm like oh my god jackie is not gonna let us start this race because you you know jackie runs a tight ship up there and he jackie walks over to doodle goes doodle 
is that some Giles County water? <laughs> Dude goes, sure is. And I said, I do. I'm in a different place now. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love it for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. No, they're awesome, man. They've been great for me. Uh, one time uh, I went over to uh, Derek Lancaster's trailer. He always parks right outside of, right as you come into pits. Yeah. In, in turn four. And uh, I go over. They got a big cooler over. I'm like, uh, you can get me something to drink. Yeah. Oh, he's, oh that, that's the leaded side, and that's the unleaded side. <laughs> Got you, man. I don't need any lead. I can tell you that right now. <clears throat> Race ain't even started yet, and they're diving in. <laughs> so, I've, I've been in some interesting spots like that, especially at Motor Mile, inside the trailers. I probably shouldn't tell too many of these stories. Yeah. Because yeah, they'll, be, they'll be checking trailers. <laughs> and stopped out front. <laughs> no kidding. So I have the dogs and everything out. I just want to know who's been who's been like the most influential for you, who's uh, who's helped you the most that that didn't get any. You know what I mean? I know your dad has helped you and your brothers helped you some, and but who's helped you the most that nobody really knows helped you? You know what I mean? There's always a lot of guys in the background that that don't get any any real good pub mentors or or people. You know what I mean? People that just help you on the side or whatever. Sure. I mean, obviously, I mean, other than my parents and my brother, I mean, who I can never pay for all they do. I mean, my brother, I mean, I mean, I really probably should say my brother because he, he really has stuck through me, you know, with me thick and thin. You sure. Know? And he, he's been there. And my, and my wife, gosh, I mean, she's, I mean, for a while there, my brother, you know, he's an engineer on Xfinity team now. So we really... You know, you know how those hours are. I mean, yep. those guys get the shop at seven o'clock, and they're on a smaller team. They're, I mean, they qualified fifth at Daytona, and they have five guys that work on the car. <laughs> I mean, they're in the middle of the, you know, the the RCR group and Junior Motorsports and this and that, and those people have armies of people. And they, there's literally five guys that built their cars. I mean, they're there till seven thirty at night. And the last thing they want to do is go work on a race car, you know, at night. So, I mean, my wife, she's she's really jumped in and really helped me. I mean, there's I mean, she's getting the mechanically part. I mean, I don't try to make her do too much stuff, but um, she's really stepped up for me. But like I said, I mean, I've had some great guys. Crew chief, me, you know, Phil Warren. He he taught me how to do a lot with nothing, um, you know, and really taught me how to drive and be smooth. And and he really taught me how to be there at the end of the race, you know. Saving I mean, tires. Well, I mean, just just saving your equipment and not, you know, you don't have to go out there and burn it up from lap you know, one to 30, just to show these guys how much you got, you know, you can sit there and get to the inside of the guy, you're passing for lead and just ride there. Patience. You know, just, just, you just, let, yeah. just let that guy on the outside, burn up his stuff on the outside. And, uh, you know, so he, he really taught me that, you know, Dwayne taking pride in your work. And then, um, you know, Sammy, he really took me to another level. I mean, he was, he was one of the, he's the smartest racer I've ever been around. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm friends with, you know, cup crew chiefs and engineers and, Xfinity crew chiefs and things like that. Houston is probably the smartest racing person on planet Earth. I mean, the dude gets it. He looks at Formula One and what they do and drag racing. And he somehow finds some ways to apply it to to late mile stock car, and it's it, you, you can't believe it. But I mean, the guy he he's just a wealth of knowledge. He's been there and done that, and he's won everything. And um, so I mean, I, I'd say I've learned a lot from him. And then. I said, I got about three or four buddies that, you know, they've all raced with me every weekend, just, you know, all my age. And, um, but now they're all, you know, engineers on Xfinity cars and front end mechanics and stuff. And so, uh, we can't really all race together anymore, but, um, all those guys, man, they really helped me out a lot when I, when I needed it over the years and I can never repay them. Where do you think we go next? You know, the spindle deal has opened up some big cans of worms, not in a good or a bad way. Just it's, brought some different things to light right so where, where do you think we go next where do you where do you, where do you see the next thing it always seems to be that we're five or six or seven or eight years behind the cup deal whatever they're doing you know it, it trickles down and we figure out ways to apply it just like you were speaking of earlier so where, where do you see that we're going to go next um I, I was thinking about that on the way over here because i feel like you were going to ask that and i wouldn't say so much we're following the cup trends anymore because they are. No, I agree, but to they, a point, we kind of are. Yeah, I mean, they're starting their cars, you know, zero ride heights and things like that. They're doing some crazy stuff to, to make all that work. But I'd say you need to look at the super late model world and see what those guys are doing. And, and one thing I see that could be stopped right now, you know, mark on your calendar, freaking February 18, 2019. We don't have to do nothing. Um, radiators. I mean, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. I mean, right now, I think. I don't think there's a radiator in our series that costs 
you know, over $750 at the most. I mean, I think that's like some elite ones out there. But I mean, there's super late mall guys that run the Snowball Derby. They have $45, $5,000 radiators. Yes. Just so they can tape up the freaking grill, you know, halfway up, you know. Correct. Closed up. Yeah. And that's the big, big elephant that I see that, that could happen. That has a huge price tag on it. I mean, you kind of see like the carbon fiber seats and stuff. They're kind of making a, a Yeah, the little things are starting to creep in a little bit. But huh? really, the I mean, you kind of price them out. I mean, they're not, I mean, they're only a couple hundred dollars more than, you know, a, a standard butler. I mean, what they charge. So, I mean, I feel like the guy's not doing that big of a deal. But I, I definitely think, you know, and it could be solved really quickly. You know, you're, you know, your front air dam's got to be completely open. I mean, no tape ever, yeah, you know. I right. Mean, then it doesn't matter. Then it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you might have some guys that make them, you know, lightweight and stuff, or you can have a minimum di dimension rule. But, you know, that that's about the only thing I really see that's going to come down the pipe and be like, some guy's going to show up with one, and he's going to run, you know, a 100-degree day at Langley, and he's going to be full tape, full, yeah. full tape, you know, the whole day. Yeah. I mean, you don't really see, I mean, I guess the cool down units are kind of all, you know. Yeah, I think they got that stopped kind of, right? Yeah, that's been, that's. Ne I think that's been in the rule book a long time. Yeah, and even in the have. super late model, they've kind of got it stopped now on a lot of instances for, I know Ricky Brooks down there was doing some things where you couldn't even unroll it out of your trailer, you couldn't do whatever, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I'd say that's probably the, I mean, as long as we get the motor deal stopped and everybody's cool with it for five, you know, five years six years whatever whatever yeah. it needs to be happy with two years <laughs> or or an entire season yeah great. i mean we could make something happen and i'm not saying there doesn't have to be tweaks but yeah. look I, yeah i mean obviously if you know if harrington's are going out there and blowing up you know every every you know two races whatever because they have a faulty you know run on lifters or something like that then yeah obviously we need to change something but sure. you know for the most part if we could really just keep this the same for a while i think i think it'd be great i mean i think i mean you know the motors are right there on the edge you guys talked about it last week of, of being too much for our series but i think it's going to make them a little bit harder to drive honestly i think you know, you know everybody's kind of worried about brakes and all like that all those things but i mean that spec motor you spin the tires of langley like every lap i mean and i imagine with the ford and harrington it's it's, it's the same way so I mean, yeah. you, you got to drive these things now I, mean, I know you guys you know qualifying the numbers are going to show up a little bit more on stickers and stuff right. but I mean, you got to drive it. I mean, shoot, we were spinning the tires in Martinsville this year, I mean, coming off the corner. So, I mean, I think you got to drive it a little bit more and get them to hook up. Well, one thing, you know, you mentioned talking about spinning tires with the spec motor. Going back to Martinsville, you know, the, the rule change, you know, last minute. Did you think that was necessary? You had a spec, correct? Yeah. Did yeah. you think that was necessary? I mean, I was happy with the rules as we showed up. You know, the entry blank, you know, the 7,000 chip on the Harrington and 7,300 on the, on the spec. I mean, I looked at, you know, every, every, there's dart fish there, and you can see it. And I thought it was all pretty even, you know, everybody yeah. that I looked at. And, and time-wise, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but when they gave, you know, the Harrington more chip, and, dude, I, I'm straight up honest with you. I, just sent, I kept the 7300 chip in my car all weekend. I could have gone to 75, but I didn't like the way the 75 drove. I felt like the motor was giving out. I mean, I felt like I was better with the other gear. So I stayed with what I had just because, honestly, I didn't have keep time to freaking keep changing gears. So, um, like I said, I thought it was smart. You know, they were going to take away the spacer, and I was like, well, that doesn't really do anything. And then the fact that, you know, you, you could screw up the throttle rod. And, I mean, I've, yeah. I've dealt with that personally, you know, trying to, you know, on a Ford crate. But, um, you know, like I said – Trying to add 30 pounds to 50 cars and say you're going to weigh them all, that's kind of, I don't know how they were ever going to do that. But, right. um, you know, like I said, everybody did it. So, yeah. Five years ago, or five years from now, where are you going to be? What are you going to do? Uh, what do you see? Are you still racing? Are you at home hanging out with your wife? Are you? Five years from now, I'll be yeah, 36 years old. What I'll be like old as dirt, man. Yeah, but what are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, a guy that, uh, you know, 13, I, I, I kind of, I, I take little tips out of things. And I I like the fact that you resonated on it. it. took you 13 times to win Martinsville. I think people don't think about that. They go and didn't win one year and then they're mad and it sucked and the scoring was terrible and this wasn't. That. But the fact that you, and, and there's many like you that have tried and tried and tried and tried. I think that makes it, is what makes it so special. Where, 
how do you keep that fire going? Meaning five years from now, is, it, is, is Martinsville going to be still that special? Or meaning, will you have that much hunger to keep winning it to that? Or once you win it, that, that's got to be a complete high for you, right? Something you've tried to do forever and ever. So then what happens? What do you do now? Yeah, I mean, I'd say that Monday after Martinsville, I, I you know, I got up, you know, and, and went to work. And I walked right back in the house. And I was like, there's the clock. It didn't go anywhere. Yeah. It wasn't It wasn't a dream. Like, no one's here to take it from me. Like, all right, we're here to repo your clock, you know. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know, man. Like I said, I, you know, I love racing. I, I wish I could keep racing, you know. Like I said, if I can, you know, run a few times at Langley and then I don't know how much longer, you know, Doodle and Aaron want to race, you know, I, I'd say – my, you know, a lot of my fate rests in their hands, really. I mean, if they want to keep racing and, um, you know, help help me financially keep doing it, then, you know, I'm going to try to do it as long as I can. I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, but, I mean, if it's going to be, a, you know, an impasse on my family and my family life, it's, it's going to be tough. But I still think, I'll, you know, I'm going to have some involvement with it. You know, I mean, I was thinking about the other day, I'd still love to be a car owner. I'd still love to, you yeah, know. Yeah, you helped a few kids, right? Different kids over time, you've done some things with to try to help yeah i mean i, I set up a couple cars every year i mean yeah. I, don't, I don't really advertise or nothing like sure, that yeah. but you know like i said people you know they want help and they, they sure. need help I, I try to give them information so um you know i i see myself more in that role i mean i, I don't know it's just uh it's way too far down the road for me yeah but that's what i was meaning i, I like the fact that you'd probably still try to stick around with it and I love the cars, you know I mean? man, and like I said, I, I don't want, you know, I got a lot of nice stuff, too. I mean I, got, I mean, I got a nice truck and trailer, you know, my toolbox is sweet, you know, my race cars are pretty pretty sweet, I mean, I got really nice stuff on them, and so I wouldn't just want that to go to anybody, I mean, I want somebody that's going to take care of them, and, um, you know, I don't have to sell none of that stuff, I mean, that's stuff I can keep forever if I really want to, but. Can you attack this season differently? I already since have. Since you've already, that's what I wondered. I already have. So, I was at Hampton Heat this year and we had a pretty good car in the first half we were jumped the second half we i don't know we got a bad f45 or or we didn't make a right adjustment or what but we were jumped the second half but i got through that first half and that was that we raced on sunday and it was probably 90 degrees and the humidity was a thousand percent and i got out of that first half and i was like i couldn't get a gatorade quick enough and i was like Man, I mean, I wasn't. Di- I mean, I was okay in the car, but once once it all stopped and then adrenaline stopped, it, it got real quick. And then I look up and there's the big bad red O one sitting up front, and Philip like looks like he's doing jumping jacks right. and, and jumping right. rope and stuff. I'm like, this guy's 52 freaking years old, right. and he's about to whip my ass. <laughs> yep. So I mean, so ever since Martinsville, um, my wife hooked me up with uh, with a trainer at our local gym, and I've been I've been three days a week ever since, and. Uh, it probably doesn't look like a slim down mud, but I've, I've got a lot of muscle under me and got my cardio really good. So I'm really attacking 2019 hard. A lot right? of muscles. He's bulking up. <laughs> He's bulking Dude, up. I mean, they're, 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 they're tough, the man. Out. They're tough, man. I'm telling you. Just for the record, uh, your wife says you need to keep racing. <laughs> so it's already done. She, she, always, she always says keep racing. You know, she's she's a real big fan of it. She just doesn't like when I'm home at like two in the morning. She's like, "Where have you been? Like, you could have been home four hours ago." I was like, "Oh, I was working on the car." She doesn't like that part, but <laughs> no, she's she's a huge fan of it. And uh, you know, she was a you know PR person, uh, you know, in the Cup Series for a while, and. You know, she was like, I was never going to marry a driver, and then I married you. Like, well, how, how did that work Yeah, she out? didn't even get a good one. Yeah, oh. exactly. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, man, I had you were here. <laughs> like, she got right. a national champion or something. Right. <laughs> and she got the Martinsville guy. That's right. That's right. Well, so. she got he got Martinsville after that. So. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's she right. brought that to she, the top. Oh, <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. oh God, do you think we have to saw the clock in <laughs> the force? That'd be terrible. Oh, probably, oh, since it came oh, after. No. I'll have to give her everything so I can keep the clock. <laughs> right. <laughs> if I still it all. I just want the clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, ne- that's never happened. So. <laughs> we're breaking wow. up marriages here on this one, too. <laughs> it's <laughs> terrible. What, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Uh, Landon Markrush uh, chiming in. He said that uh, you really know how to get around short tracks for sure. Oh, thanks. Uh, your brother says that he's not home yet. I'm not really sure what that means. But. Well, he should be working. I, I don't know why Patrick and them are doing it if he's sitting there watch, looking at his phone. I mean, what well, the hell? I mean, you know. They got to go to Atlanta. Right, right. Now, what what is what does your brother do now? He's an engineer and front-end mechanic on the, the 08 Greg Galling car with Bobby Daughter. Got you. So gotcha. they had Joey Gase last year, and it's still the same team, but, you know, number change and all that and sponsor and stuff. So, Gotcha. 
<laughs> working his guts out. Yeah, he used to swing in here once in a while when he was at GMS, I think. Yeah. And then uh, I haven't seen him in a while. I figured he must have went to a different place. Yeah. Let's see, he probably stops by a lot now since he goes to Statesville Auction. So. Actually, I do, yeah. Yeah, it gives me a hard time. Sure. Gotcha. Uh, Kyle Manch said that uh, you're an all-around uh, good racer in all respects of the sport. Oh. So. Yeah, I, I are, are you are you really reading like the four comments that are really nice? Well, or what are you well let me today? just go ahead and tell you there are no negative no, yeah, comments. We don't. I don't really know why. Oh, we've talked know. about this. That was really late. surprising. Corey Heim and Lloyd Gardner have not got on here yet. I was, so. I was going to say Lloyd Gardner's got to get on there at some point. It's like <laughs> you didn't really love Martinsville. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man! Because literally, like, I think that's all he does. Like, he has an alarm clock at like <laughs> two thirty in the afternoon. It's like I'm gonna post this up. He hates on you. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> well, oh. I don't. I didn't. I haven't seen that. I'm gonna have to study up. Oh, I've seen that. I have to study up. I haven't seen that. I've seen plenty of it. Um, I, I gotta ask you just for just for the hell of it. What what did you? Uh, what was your response? Because I didn't talk to you about it. You know, what was your response when we put out the uh, just review it shirts? That was uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, it was all in fun. You know. So. Hey, I mean, and and that's I think that was like one of the first things you said on the show. Like the the t shirt game needs to step it up in the late. Oh world. yeah, it's and, terrible. And like I said, I mean, I, I've thought about you know you know the Portnoy guy for for Barstool or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean. I mean, it, it's so funny what he's done with, like, Roger Goodell and stuff. I mean, like, right. I, I don't know who could actually get away with any of that, but, you right. know, for yeah, but who's going to stop you? I, I've been wanting – Who's going to stop you? I wanted to you? do a Lynn Carroll one just like right. they do, but I figured who's that stopped? probably wasn't a good idea. You yeah, probably but... never get a, any type of entry into Martin's well, Speedway. They, they probably they carry not. you out just like they did him at well, the Well, they ain't going to carry me out, okay? <laughs> 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 They're going to need a crane to make that happen. There's right? a lot of things that happen, but Langley getting carried out of Martinsville probably ain't one of them. They they're might gonna, drag him out. They're going to hook a witch and hook you to your belt and pull you under. <laughs> Whatever they got to do, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Uh, but I, like seriously, I've really thought of—I mean, not you know good, the Goodell style, but you know right. the, the T-shirt part really needs to happen in our deal. I mean, yeah. Kevin Swindell is killing it in the USAC deal. A lot of them guys. I mean, that, I, I watched. That's the way most a lot of the, the the Midwest guys made it. That's the biggest thing that I can't figure out. You know, a lot of the dirt guys. That's all. The, you know, that was the way they did it. And and Lee does a good job too. Which I mean, I guess at some point you have to when you get ten thousand people constantly asking for T-shirts sure. all the time. But, sure. Right. You know, I, I have like the same three or four people come up to me. He's like, "You any shirts?" I'm like, "Ah, oh, man, I'm like, I've been trying to get this car right together. <laughs> right. Like, Aren't you glad it's here? Like that we right. made it. You know, but." You know, everybody wants a T-shirt. Well, I mean, that leads into something that I've wanted to do, and that's kind of why we did the Just Review It, the Just Skew It, the, you know, the Race 22 shirts last year. I've been thinking about some other ones to do. I, I thought it would have been cool to do, have done one with the, the clock and you and, you know, chime something to the effect of chiming every 15 minutes or something. <laughs> I, I thought that would have been cool as hell. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to get some shirts made to, to – give out this year with you know with the martin jewel stuff on because i mean I, I want that out there forever you yeah know? i want right. someone to pull that up on on facebook or whatever it's called in 30 years and be like look what i found in the you know my, my wife's bin that she told me to throw away 20 <laughs> times you know like a martin jewel ce shirt so right but ce fault first winner of the drag race at uh, martinsville <laughs> 60 foot drag race what do you think they've been yeah. almost as good they call as the, it the valley DUI star yeah. credit union 300 we're, we're, sir. we're getting ready to take this mic away <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you say say that again <laughs> i said they call it the valley star credit union 300 they don't call it the drag <laughs> yeah but the other laps apparently didn't count it was that uh, last 60 foot uh, right well it, it may, maybe and you it like, knew that maybe too, it was right? a little, little more comfortable in the grandstands where you were but where i was sitting <laughs> it was intense for about two and a half hours okay <laughs> that's awesome Oh, that's the good stuff wow. right there. You can't beat that. Uh, Mason Dunn chiming in. Oh, and y'all can expect it to be good. Yeah. He said that Franklin's towing can handle pulling me out of there. So. <laughs> there you go. Maybe he's so. got he's got the best trucks. No, for sure, for sure. Um, Lee Jordan chiming in. He's uh, he's my t-shirt guy. Um, LJ Designs um, actually doing some shirts right now for yeah. Performance Center. Uh, hopefully, we'll be seeing them here in the next couple of days. They'll be out and, and available to uh, the public. Um, you know, and that's something that me and you know Lee have talked about doing different t-shirts for different tell, guys. Tell that guy to Facebook me. A- absolutely Ser- seriously lee you're listening see you want some shirts so let's make it happen absolutely. i'm selling you shirts as fast as i can okay there you go all right um but uh you know i, I and i do uh i do think that it'd be good for you to have some uh, martinsville you know and i think you should have fun with it you know go you know a little more bold than just the average you know shirt martinsville winner you know i think it'd be cool if, you know because it was controversial you know use it to your advantage 
whatever. It, I, but it wasn't. <laughs> that race has come down to that the last, six, you, you know what I mean, right. three times. It, it's, yeah. not, it, it's he controversial studied, every year. Well, I, I understand that, but he studied the game right. he, and figured out how it worked and figured out how to put himself in a position to capitalize on the game. That's what racing is supposed to be, I thought, <laughs> right? But for some reason when it goes down that way, you've lost. I, I, I heard a good one a long time ago when I first – started racing down here was I lost way more of them than I won that way. And I thought, oh, that's a somber way of putting it. But we, we won a race that we probably shouldn't have won. And the guy looked at me and he said, man, we've lost a way more of them than we actually won. We just finally cashed in on one of the 50 that we should have won that we weren't able to. And I think that's a valid way to look at some of that, those things, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, the only one I could really think of that probably, like, well, I mean, we had a really good car, hundred long, hundred fifty lappers, and like the first hundred and ten went green, and we we you know got to second I think, but we didn't have nothing for him. He was gone, and then we had a late race restart, and he took the bottom, and I took the top, and you know I, I beat him that way, and uh, so like I said, I mean, but yeah, Roger, you're right. I mean, you definitely lose way more of them that you should have won. Than, yeah, for than sure. The ones you didn't deserve. So. But it seems like the only people remember those they don't, they don't remember those when you broke five to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the way it always is. Somebody, somebody told me last week to ask you this, and I, I, it's funny, so I'll go ahead and ask you. Uh, they wanted to know if it was true that you only wash your toter once a year before Martinsville. <laughs> no, I try to wash it more than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, uh, that was, I just missed that. Well, who's that funny? I, I didn't. Uh, you, you, you had to be there for uh, the conversation. <laughs> right, I missed it. <laughs> I mean, Bob. That was my Bob, DUI joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bob from Dirty Boys cleans our trucks. So. See, see, he's got a guy. He's yeah. got people. He's. He, he probably only does it one time before Martinsville. The rest of the guys do it the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> probably got him right. Wow. Wow. Um, but I don't really I don't really want to dive deep into this conversation. I kind of told you about it before, you know, talking about the spindles. Um, cuz this is oh, our fifth it. this is our fifth week of, of yeah, talking really. about spindles here. So I would really I hopefully we don't have any more spindle questions after this week, but I, I just uh you know, somebody told us that you were running, you know, that type of spindle, I guess. Not necessarily the exact same type that's illegal now, but that type of spindle at Martinsville, correct? So, the God, honest truth, hand on the Bible, whatever. I had one on the right front, and I had a stock one on the left front. Like a stock one that we've had forever. Because I, could, because I wanted something different from Martinsville, and there was no way I was going to get a new type one made in that yeah. period of time. And so I just got one fabricated to what I wanted for the left front, you know, and that's what we won with. Gotcha. G- given the way that the rule is written today and uh, I guess how you expect it to be enforced, because, I mean, it's not been enforced yet, what, uh, what is your plan, you know, as far as spindles go? What are, what are you going to do? Do you have to change anything? Or are you just going with what you got? I mean, what do you got to do? And, no, and have yeah. you talked to anybody? Oh, well, I mean, I mean I, I've, I've talked to – one guy with NASCAR who who I trust really well, I used to work with him, um, and the way he read it out to me was, you know, I was good to go um, mm-hmm. with what I had. Now, I mean, I still don't think it's very fair that the guys that didn't make an investment in the race car. I mean, because at the end of the day, I mean, look, everybody can get all hen hauled out about the price tag or whatever, but you're investing in your race car, and you're gonna run your car. You know, say if you want to run your car 20 times, you know, it's costing you 50 bucks every race to invest in that spindle Mm -hmm. i mean so in the one spindle i mean i'm talking about one spindle right you know so i mean if you really want to you know count all the chickens whatever it's a hundred dollars a race if you you know if you don't think you can invest a hundred dollars into you know your 30 40 fifty thousand dollar race car i mean i think i think it's just small potatoes i mean i really do i just you know, but for the people that do have them and that made the investment in their car, I think there needs to be some type of remedy for them to, you know, not just trash them. I mean, what, what would that be? That's been a topic of discussion too around a lot of, a lot of groups, right? Like, so what? What now? What happens now? I mean, the, the rule says you know they got the steering arm has to be welded. So I mean, I don't know how how else more you can do it. I mean, look, I mean, I don't think no one's gonna. You know, first off, I think you have to take a bandsaw to the freaking thing to to get it apart. Sure. And last time I checked, I don't see too many bandsaws at the racetrack. So, no. yep. and I think the mo now is that you know the tracks need to make a decision. So it, it is going to be a track deal, 
I mean, I had one customer whose car I worked on this weekend. You know, they wanted to go race somewhere, and the guy told them if he showed up with them, regardless of, you know, welded on, they are going to add 20 pounds to the right side. I was like, well, that's not fair. I mean, yeah. look, look, I mean, in that track, too, I mean, they don't even go by all the NASCAR rules. They just pick and choose. So, I mean, wh- which ones are you going to? I think every race. Yeah, just that, that's, that seems choose. to be the conglomeration of what we're hearing Except from Motor everybody. Mile. I think Motor Mile goes 100% by whatever those rules are. And uh, I think they have every year. Yeah, I mean, so like I said, I mean, there needs to be some type of remedy for, for people. I mean, look, there's enough conversation and enough – you know, I mean, we all got freaking email for God's sake. I mean, much less text messages and everything right. else. There should be some type of remedy to, you know, if you want to race, you know, here's what you need to do. And I don't think it needs to involve way. I think you need to fix them right, and that way everybody can go race. I mean, we, we all want to go race. We want to all compete at the highest level. I mean, those cars that Denny Hamlin showed on both have, and I had, you know, regular spindles in my car, and I felt like I had, you know, as good a shot as anybody to win. So. What do you think they should do with them in limited? In limited? Because you know they're going to start trickling there, right? Because that's the deal. Everybody decides, you know, the late mile stock car guys will get that. Then you get the limited guys that they want to make sure that they're on the top of the thing. The heap of of limited guys, but that's pretty much as far as their budget will allow them to go on a weekly basis. So what happens to them? I mean, do you think that I, I know that progress is never going to stop and we're going to continue to make the cars better and better and better, but do you think for the health of the sport that we should – curb the the limited deal a little bit so that it doesn't i mean I, I that mean, makes itself more the late model and more premier series then or i mean i it's kind of bad to say but i mean i i i don't race them so i don't know what what they're all up against you know i mean i don't know if they all run uh pro shocks and you know they're, they're you know the nose is five ten feet in the air like they do a motor mile or you know do they run the same shocks we do i mean you know what what I, I don't know. I like said, I you know, you know, are they all supposed to run old, all old 486 ring gears that we all got rid of you <laughs> right, know, no, you know, right, seven no. years ago? I, I don't mean I that mean, either. I just I, I I see that bleeding into this. Okay, which, can, can they not have like 412 you know ring gears like we all have? With the, you know, <laughs> right. So I mean, what part do you want to stop? I mean, do you want do you want to stop them from having Draco springs on their cars, or does everyone have to run a two and a half inch you know Eibach from? You know, nineteen ninety-five. Right, whatever. Yeah. So, like I said, I mean, if people want to make the investment in the car, I, just, I think it's racing. You know, if you if you want to go fast, you know, I mean, you got to work on it, and you know, you got to do things to make improvements, and you know, maybe you can't afford it, but maybe you, you know, save money somewhere else, and you can, you know, make that investment. But you know, like I said, I don't think you have to have them. I mean, I really don't. I mean, I think, I don't think Philip had them all year, and he was by far the most dominant late model stock car in the country. I mean, in, in our region, so I don't think he had them. But, um, but like, like I said, you're not going to stop people from spending money. Right, at I mean, all. I mean, how, how many people? I try. I mean, you have people walk in the door every day. How can I beat the next guy? <laughs> right, we were just like, What do I got to do? That. What, right. do I, what, what track do I have to write? Right. I mean, that happens all the time. I mean, shoot. <laughs> yep. I mean, some of my car owners are like, what do we got to do to beat, you know, beat right. Philip at Motor Mile? I'm like, uh, well, I got to give about 10,000 more laps. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> You know, but I mean, seriously, I mean, it's I just, appreciate that answer. You do not know how much I appreciate that answer. So it's the I mean, truth. Like I said, I mean, people got to work on their cars and, you know, make investments when you can, you know, it's just, you know, there's going to be guys that buy wheels for, you know, a hundred dollars and there's guys that buy brand new wheels, you know, every other season. I mean, what, where, where do you stop it? I mean, it's just, it's racing. It's always been this way. You know, there's, there's always the guy with, you know, McQuarrie's and Firestones and beating, you know, beating these to the punch here and, you know, got the right guy to do their V6, and then, you know, you know, first guy to have a Ford Cray to Martinsville, oh, yeah, and, yep. you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it never ends. So, I mean, right. it's just racing, man. Like I said, it just, people are going to spend money and, and just go stupid about it, and, you know, you can't, can't stop, stop progress. You can't, you can't stop innovation. I yeah. mean, you can't, you really can't. Kyle Manch wants to know if he can rent your right front spindle for one race. <laughs> sure. For the right price, absolutely. <laughs> for the right price. I, lo- I, I love Kyle Manch, so I'll cut him a discount. You need a sure. crash deposit. I mean, as good as he's talking about you tonight, I mean, you have to give him a discount. He's got the building crush panels for, like, at least a couple years. He's a good craftsman. <laughs> he built some good stuff. He really does really nice work. Yep, he does. <laughs> wow. Uh, Mason Dunn said that, uh, going back to the conversation about your uh, – Toter earlier, he said, "You uh, you ain't seen nothing until you seen uh, Fast Eddie wheel the trailer with a Chevy 1500." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we so where we lived in Virginia Beach, um, we kept the truck and trailer in our house, and we, you know, my parents live in a very nice neighborhood in Virginia Beach, and it's only about an acre 
big and you know we have a 40 foot trailer and <laughs> stacker and a motorhome so it gets really tight around there so my dad's got this you know 3500 you know regular cab pickup truck and we spin the trailer around the driveway to, to move, maneuver it and we actually had to tape two by fours to the to the leaf springs so the truck wouldn't bottom out so bad <laughs> wow hey man things we do at a race right man. you, you got to do what you got to do for sure uh, just letting everybody know, I seen another comment there a minute ago about the sound. We got, I think we got it turned up now. You know, let us know if uh, you know you need it adjusted or uh, whatever here. It's probably uh, Doc. Been, yeah, Doc turned us down. I don't know what happened. So, uh, producer going to chime in here. Uh, Doc has not touched anything. My setup is the same. You oh changed yours. Thank it's you. all on me. It's now. always somebody else's fault with him. It's all just on so me. you know, on Facebook, all ten thousand of you watching, like I don't have no buttons over here, so I can't. Do <laughs> they don't give me any either. <laughs> If we had 10,000 people watching, we could afford to fix this. Come on. Just just saying. I think I figured out what it was. I think I had uh, something How many people you got watching? Um, I, there's no actual way to tell them. We figured this out. We, like, we've been having a steady... Five? Oh, whoa. <laughs> there's more than five. <laughs> oh, but uh, <laughs> not many more. Um, <clears throat> but, I, I mean, I listen to replays. I mean, like I said, I mean, that whole show last week, I listened on replays. I mean, I think it's great what y'all are doing here, man. It's The show needed to come back in, in some type of capacity and... You know, like I said, the show last week was was really cool. I mean, I can't believe you guys got those guys to show up, and that was really really cool. Now, now next we got to get uh, Shane Laws, uh, Jeff Bomar, Jackie Lawson, and maybe Randy Merriman or somebody else, or Lynn Carroll, or Lynn's Lynn's my number one target. I'd like to have him here. Shouldn't be too bad. Y'all live close to each other, don't you? Oh, we definitely live close to each other. We see each other hey, Walmart at Walmart. So. <laughs> yeah, hunting section. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Definitely <clears throat> don't live too far. But And one thing that we want to do, we want to try to before, probably I should say after the spring Martinsville um, Cup race, we want to try to get uh, Clay Campbell to come on and just talk about, you know, Martinsville coming up and, you know, if there's any changes. I don't know that there will be. I have no idea, no way of knowing. Um, you know, and just what the uh, – I thought it worked out all pretty well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure. What do you I'm think sure about? I, I know that there was a lot of discussion post uh, Martinsville about the, and I know what your answer is going to be, but I'm going to ask you a question anyway. Post tech, um, post race tech, there was there was some controversy, if you want to say, just from it being quick, boom, you know, not not hadn't been like I that. I don't know that that was a controversy. It's just how it happened, and it happens like at every every few years. You have a circumstance where, for whatever reason, that goes those. a lot faster. Those are my favorite when they well, say, no, nah, we're going to slow it up. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, look, I, I've been in some texts, like, you know, that the guy come up to me and said, spell NASCAR or spell <laughs> the other driver's name. <laughs> right. And, and he got the hell out of there. <laughs> right. Now, Martinsville Tech was no joke. I mean, they, I mean, we, we, we pulled the rear end apart. You know, we pulled the transmission out. We pulled the intake off. Carburetor, I mean, they pulled the exhaust off, looked through all the exhaust. Um, I mean – Jackie and uh, Lightning, Lightning and Justin Ellis were, were looking at intakes and carburetors. And Jackie, I mean, he Lightning, he's on it, ain't he? Yeah, he's on I, it. I love that guy. He's, I do too. I like he, him. He's really good. I mean, he, he's you know treats you right. And uh, Jackie, he looked all over my car, man. So I mean, I, I don't know. You got the best in the business looking at your stuff. I mean, so I, I don't know. I don't know about quick or not. I mean, we we, we spent a while there, <laughs> there tearing yeah, apart. Yeah, sure. I. <laughs> These two over here. I don't know if they drink during the <laughs> we're, week. We're arguing happens. about the sound over here because uh, <laughs> it was my fault, and I really didn't want to say that, but <laughs> whatever. So Doc taking pride in that—that that it was me that messed up. So uh, he loves me anyway. <laughs> um, speaking of Martinsville and the the way the race finished, obviously there's no going back, and I'm not you know trying to go there. What do you think they should do differently, or do you think they should do anything differently, given the way that the positions change hands, not just with yours, but like with Josh losing the lead like that? Do you think they need to look at that and maybe do something different going forward? Um, I mean, I, I don't know what you would do. I mean, I mean, other than the leader, not, you know, the whole, the whole deal with the with the lead changing at the start finish line was because for the longest time the guy in the, the lead be coming to the red stripe where on the wall and they just jam on the brakes mm -hmm. and, and trying and you know i watch i mean i watch uh alex yance win the race one year because boswell jumped to restart and I forgot about that. And, and but yance went with him 
I mean, he, he, he jumped it too, but, you know, he wasn't the lead guy, so they black flagged Boswell, right. and Alex got the lead, and, you know, he still had a great enough car to, to lead the rest of the race and, and win, but, you know, that that was the point of stopping that was to, you know, let the guy, you know, let's have a real race, you know, let's not have, you know, games and stuff, because I was tearing up cars for a long time. So, I mean, I don't, you know, people got to be on their game at Martinsville. I mean, I don't know what more right. you really want. So, and then, I'll, I mean, maybe one overtime. Um, I, I th- I'd say that's probably really all that needs to happen. You know, I mean, like I said, we could have saved a lot more cars, you know, if we had, you know, two less overtimes. But, um, yeah. you know, that's that's the way they want to ra- run the race. I mean, like I said, I mean, I think the pit stop deal is cool. You know, you, don't, you can do yeah. your two or whatever. And, um, you know, I think Josh, you know, really saved the driver's meeting by saying, look, we need to work on our cars, you know, yeah. on the brake. I mean, sure. I mean, there was no sense of trying to police the fact of not working on your car. So, you know, the, the less, a little bit less rules, the better, but, you know, as far as the, the format and stuff, I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm the winner and, you know, da, 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 of course. And, you know, but I mean, like I said, I mean, other than getting rid of two overtimes, I mean, I don't see a reason to try to pull, prolong it anymore or change anything else like i said i mean some of those there we've been through all those things and you know just because people don't like it now doesn't mean we need to go back and incur that same beast again right you've been involved in this for a long time what's your what's your perception of where we're at i think we're improving every you know late mile stock car as a whole I, i've seen a lot of customers in here that i haven't seen in a long time lately um starting to see some of those guys that are the working guy is starting to, you know, the economy's pretty good and things are good and he's coming back in and spending. Where do you see, what would you like to see so that the sport can become more healthy? Oh, I definitely think we've gone through a change in the past probably year and a half. You know, I say probably about the end of 16 to, to now, we've gotten a lot more younger guys showing up. Um, some with money, some with not, you know, some, you know, they're just, you know, you mm-hmm. know, sons and dads and, you know, racing what, you know, what all this was built on, you know, I think when I was really getting in the middle of it, you know, 08, 09, 10, 11, you know, you still had some pretty cagey veterans, man. I mean, I mean, you had Chad Harris and Wayne Ramsey yeah. and, and, uh, Tony McGuire and, and, you know, of course, Phillip, you know, on it and, you know, Davin Seitz, he was on it and, um, you you had some really good guys that you know, they might not always have the best cars, but goddamn, they could drive. I mean, really drive. And um, I think we we've lost some of those guys a little bit. But the next group, I mean, they're, those kids are no joke. I mean, I remember going to Motor Mile in '16 and and Repco being on my ass for for 35 laps. I'm like, man, when's this kid gonna give up? Like, we got a long <laughs> race to go here, and he is like on my bumper, but. You know, so I think we got a lot of good kids coming up, and I think, uh, you know, it's it's definitely going through a change, but I, I do think it's getting better, and I think, the you know, the motor deal, you know, being stabilized and having only three motors, I mean, look, everybody can throw stones at this deal all they want, but, I mean, the super deal has its own problems too. I mean, the pro right. late model deal, I mean, they had their own issues this past week, you know, with different guys showing up with different motors and things like that, so... I think uh, I think we got that reined in, and I think the cars. I mean, affordability-wise, they're definitely you know, it's economically. I mean, I don't know how you can build a car any cheaper than you know eighty-five hundred or whatever for a surface plate car, but you know that's kind of the price. I mean, I think you guys. I mean, steel's all gone up, and um, but I think the inventory of used cars now has gotten a lot lot better out there and you know i'm having a hard time selling the car i got for the money i want but you know if i put it up there for 12 grand i think it'd be gone tomorrow and yep. that's usually what i've done in the past when i'm ready to build a new one and i need to get rid of a car i sell you know sell for 13 15 grand and you know it's usually gone the next week so um but i don't really need to get rid of that car and i really like that car so i don't want to get rid of it so um but for the right price i will there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, I think that's I think that's where things are at. You know, people are buying. Oh, this is you know, C. E. Fox old car, and you know what I mean. Butterbean shoe. He took my old car, and I'll qualify me the first night with it. <laughs> you know, like, so my dad's like, "Did we get rid of the right car?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I, mean, I thought so." <laughs> but you know, like I said, and he still got that car, and you know, so I think that's where the progression is going to go. Is um, you know, people are going to get their feet wet with an older car and, and try to see where they do. And then, you know, then they're going to go to guys like Roger and Jay and, 
and uh, Bobby Creech and you know who, who they can afford and, and go race. I think, uh, like I said, I think it's in a good spot, man. I really do. I think things are definitely getting better. I, I like to see it. I liked, I liked the NASCAR at least coming out with something. I like to, you know what I mean. I like, I like some of these things. I, I'm glad that they're happening. And I, I hope we can continue to. I mean, I know the people. I know the people at Motor Mile. I mean, I went to the last meeting they had, and I mean, there's a lot of racers there. I mean, granted, they might not run late models, but eventually they might run late models. Sure. You know, the Pro right. Fours and and uh, the Limiteds and things like that, and they're really excited about what they've done. You know, as far as the two tire program and uh, you know lowering the back gate money and, and things like that. So um, you know, and paying so much to start. I mean, I think. I mean, I think it's a it's a big change. And I think you know South Boston cut on that very early. You know, right. only having two tires and paying five hundred to start. I mean, I guess that's my biggest problem with racing right now is, you know, some of these racetracks pay two thousand dollars to win, and they've been paying two thousand dollars to win for ten, over ten years over yeah. 10 years i mean my dad used to ro- go to south boston in 1983 they were paying 500 bucks to show up my dad was a 10th place in the Bo- point stands bush series driver i mean so what was you know tommy houston getting and butch lindley sure. and and tommy ellis and all those guys i mean what were they getting to show up you know i mean that's what i think so i mean those guys had to be getting 12 or 1500 bucks i mean back then Probably. so i'd like to see a little bit more you know I said, I know the racetracks are taking a big thing. You know, I I think the last thing I'd ever want to do is own a racetrack. And the last thing I'm going to do is tell someone how to run their business. But, you know, I think they kind of need to catch up a little bit on what the financial burden is. You know, you can't see they keep taking Hoosier tires, F45s. They've been, you know, in 2008 were $500 and now they're $650. Yeah. I mean, they ain't changed. They still suck. Sometimes more. (laughs) They they still roll under and hit the cross member every, every lap you go in the corner. So... I mean, there's got to be a little bit of give and take on, on the whole deal. Well, speaking of tires, you know, there's been some conversation because South Boston being on the F50, oh, Motor yeah, Mile being on the good. F50 this year. Where do you stand on, you know, as far as the F45 versus F50 debate? Uh, well, when it's on Langley, my, my career really went in the dumps. Uh, <laughs> I was really good on F45s, and uh, it took a long time. I mean, it took all your season to try to figure out that F50. And, I mean, we, we got better, but I wasn't very good on them. Um, they're definitely very temperamental, and I mean, granted, the F45, you're gonna, you kind of knew what you expected. You know, we've dealt with them so long. You're gonna get 10, 12 laps out of them if you take care of them heat cycles, and then, you know, they're just gonna constantly fall off from there, especially if it's a 100 degree day. Now, if you go to South Boston and it's 53 degrees, and uh, you know, there's no humidity in there, you could run all day and run the same speed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just don't have a whole lot of success with the F50, so. I mean, if that, you know, obviously they're supposed to be a more durable tire, but I still yeah. wore, wore, my, wore my right front out at, at 200 laps at South Boston. So I think they still wear out. I don't think this whole thing, of, oh, you know, they're just as fast, you know, the, you know, the whole race. But actually, when I did win the Hampton Heat, I ran my fastest lap. We ran the same four tires all night. You know, they ran, like, the Cars Tour F45 on the left side. You know, mm-hmm. of course, it wasn't a Cars Tour in 2014. But yeah. they ran that harder F45 right. than what we were normally accustomed to. And then they ran the F50 on the right side. And I ran my fastest lap, you know, on 200 laps around 197. I ran my fastest lap. And yeah. then Danny Edwards finished second. His fast lap was 199. Wow. So, I mean, it's got to create better racing, I think. And, yeah. Um, Certainly, be nice not to buy so many sets of tires at the racetrack every weekend, but um, we just have to wait and see. Like I said, I'm not very good on them, so I'm not a big proponent on them. But you know, should I, be an interesting season at Motor Mile for you. Then. Well, I mean, and and they have to police it right. I mean, they can't just say, you know, all right, here's your, you know, two tires, go bolt them on. Because I mean, there's there's plenty of games being played. You know, oh, people right. are, sure. I mean, people have printed their own Hoosier stickers to go on there, and <laughs> I mean, anything for an advantage, right? So, right. you know, I think. I don't know how you really are going to police it all that hard unless you have literally a freaking hawk on everyone. But yep. I think if you do it right, it, it could be really beneficial. And if people play it right, they, you know, it, it could save everybody. But there's always going to be those few guys that would just want to, you know, roll two out of the trailer and, and you know, do a switcheroo and, and think they got one over somebody. You said you listened to, uh, to last week's show. And one thing I'm interested to hear your take on is, you know, what did you think? about the thought process of NASCAR behind the scenes before trying to 
actually educate their officials so much more. You're friends with a lot of those guys and a lot of the officiating guys. Were you surprised to hear that that the tracks didn't really get behind NASCAR trying to educate the officials? And do you see that as a problem? Well, I don't know about the whole online deal like Kenny was talking about, but I mean, I've known for a long time those officials all get together and, and do something. I mean, you know, Shane's really spearheaded that deal of um, Shane Law's you know, getting the officials together and figuring out, all right, this is, you know, this is a proper cylinder head. This is, you know, one that looks bad, you know, and, you know, springs and things like that. And those guys spend a lot of the time on their own and own hours. I mean, I can't imagine official pay is all that great. I'm sure. No, for sure not, right? You know, and uh, and just to be cussed at for, you know, 12 hours at a racetrack all day, I can't imagine that's a whole lot of fun either. But, um, you know, those guys have done a lot of things on their own. You know, Motor Mile had a big meeting there and, you know, had the officials there. They've had them at Langley. They've had them at Sobo. You know, shoot, they had a big one at, at Hedgecock's one year, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, with, yeah. with, with the tracks too. So I don't think, you know, I'm not sure what the whole, you know, I, I, I don't think there's that stigma to it. I think they're all working together. Like I said, and I think technology has helped more. You know, those guys are all getting smartphones now. And, right. you know, the grand are all Sam sucks. You know, every, every official <laughs> knows goddamn Sam <laughs> sucks. But, um, but, you know, green bubbles, whatever, and you're texting them. But, um, you know, those guys all talk to each other. I mean, they, they, I think they all know what's going on a lot more than, than they used to. Tell me how much different you think. You know, I, I wasn't a proponent to this sport till the last 10 years, and I find there to be a gap between the people that run – down in this area where we are around Statesville, you know, the the tracks and the people that run in Virginia. There's always kind of a disconnect all, between, yeah, right? And, and and explain that. I think maybe some people don't know. Maybe everybody knows. Maybe some don't. What do you think drives that so much? Just the competition or the fact that I just you always see that divide and I don't necessarily understand all the time why. Uh, so you're a Virginia guy, right? Tell, tell me. Yeah, tell now, me. I'm a, now I'm a transplant. Right, you you <laughs> move, you've seen both sides. So tell me what 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 do you what what falls behind that? You know that was the one thing you heard. Oh, this is a Virginia guy, or this isn't, or this is. The, so explain to me why, why do you think that divide is there? Well, I mean, not a knock on racetracks in North Carolina and South Carolina, but they, you know, they're definitely aged a lot more. I mean, granted, a couple of them have repaves and things like that. So I think the style of racing is 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 way different too i mean um back in virginia you know it was all twin 75s or 150 lappers and down here you had like twin 40s and twin 50s and things like that and um you know the crate motors were a lot more prevalent down here than they ever were in yeah. virginia i mean motor mile i mean sh- or south boston who, who would show up with a 604 and if yeah. it did run good then you know it was cheated up <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean it's pretty obvious and it's like so but then down here, I mean, Josh Berry's made a living off the 604, you right. know, at Hickory. So, uh, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I would say, you know. You just can't ever get anybody to describe it. It it, it baffles me that there's this little hidden well, myth and I, and behind, I, and, and, I, and it divides and I, the sport, I think, I, a little bit. And I bit. think guys around here, I mean, it's definitely since I've been here, and I've gotten sucked in it too, they get so caught up in who was – you know, this nationwide crew chief told me this, and sure. my buddies that, you know, uh, underneath mechanic, but he's, you know, telling me <laughs> I need to put a knack of duck in the right rear window, and, you know, just all this nonsense. And, you know, the guys in Virginia were, were so disconnected from that that we just worked on just our cars. Raced. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying anybody's a better racer or not, but I think, you know, it's definitely easy to get caught up down here. I mean, believe me, I went to work for, you know, Hillman Racing for, you know, a couple of years, and, I mean, the stuff I saw and the things I do, I was like, man, I could do that to my car. Yeah. And it's like, God, I suck. Right. <laughs> what am I doing here? I mean, shoot, I mean, there's a while there. I lived on a pull-down rig every week just because yeah. they let me use it. And I got slower and slower and slower. And it was like, <laughs> and they finally told me one day, you going to get off that slow-down machine or what? Right. <laughs> and so finally I just, you know, just started going back to what I know. And, Humans and, are racers too, man. They know it, right? Oh, God, Mike Sr., man. He gets that cigarette ash right. that, that long. I you know you're in trouble. Right. <laughs> I work but, with him at AJ Floyd, so he'd have that thing be a foot long, just be all burnt I mean, he, talk, I mean he, he, really, he really showed me, you know, how to really take pride in your race car. I mean, it wasn't – I mean, shoot, now it's like – 
you know, he was obsessed with having thread lube and anti seize on everything. And it's like, I worked on guys' cars and they're, they're all brand new bolts and they're just slammed in there. I was like, man, yeah. you don't put anything on there. Right. I mean, Mike Senior, he'd be like, you know, you ain't got no thread lube on there. I'd say, Senior, it's enough on there. Right. So we had to go back and like put thread lube on the nuts. So just the way he'd be like, you know, there's stuff on there. Right. <laughs> but. You know, like I said, I think there's definitely a lot of that, you know, and, and I've gotten caught up in that sometimes too, but you just got to kind of block out that stuff just because they're on such a different program than we are, you know, radial tires and everything else. I mean, it just doesn't quite communicate all that well, but um, we all clash at Martinsville, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. And then Myrtle Beach, it, you know, it, all, it, it happens down there too. Uh, I'm going to attempt to not butcher his last name. Steven, who's usually here with us, uh, Civitaris. Uh, Six Pack. Whatever. He said it's a different world across the state line. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Lloyd Gardner, we mentioned him earlier. <clears throat> he, oh, he finally uh, woke up. It, he did, and he has not mentioned anything of that sort. He wants to know what a good hotel for the Dillon Pass race is, and I'll just go ahead and let him know there's not a good hotel in Dillon whatsoever. God, there's nothing in Dillon. I mean, just, I don't know, stay in Charlotte. I, I'm not really sure, man. <clears throat> yeah, it's God, nothing it's, good. It's worth there. the drive. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So I, I was helping uh, Chris Boucher was driving for um, – guys working for in the legend cars and uh we took him down there in david reagan's old late model we're like we're going to dylan i'm like where the hell is dylan <laughs> and he like just get in the truck we're going i was like all right so i fell asleep and i woke up and we were going through a mobile home park and it was dark <laughs> i'm like where are we we stayed in that place isn't there a place just down from the racetrack across the street There's i think i slept in my clothes there. oh it's bad, i think man. i slept in my clothes there. i'll tell you what who, who, i don't, <laughs> and I don't mean to, i don't know if it's the same guy that runs it now this was a lot i mean this was like 2006 so um, it is man, the same guy. So uh, when they went under caution, they had him a watermelon eating contest, and I thought that was the funniest shit I ever seen. <laughs> I mean, those people are going nuts, man. We need a jumbotron um, for here. Hell yeah! I mean, that, it was cool as shit, man. I mean, it was. I mean, they were getting after it, and I was like, "This is perfect. This is what you're supposed to do." Yeah, that's awesome. In South Carolina for you, All right? Oh man, Lloyd wants to know who was talking about him earlier. That was me, and I'm not repeating it. So go back and listen on the uh, on the replay there, Lloyd. You should have joined us earlier. <clears throat> Um, Could have been a little quick on the restart, too. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow. (laughs) I guess you know what we were talking about now, Lloyd. (laughs) Oh, I can't believe C.E. went there. I like it. See, that's what makes him great. You don't give a damn. I ain't scared of nobody, man. Ain't nobody going to beat me up. Wow. They can try. Well, (laughs) well, well, speaking of, Martinsville, uh, what the heck happened between you and whoever it was with the Nelson crew in between the heat races or whatever the heck it was? I don't even know. Uh, The guy told me to... To shut my mouth and I told him I didn't really appreciate it <laughs> so that's about it gotcha gotcha <clears throat> um I wasn't really sure I'd heard about 4,000 stories and I hadn't really seen or anything I didn't I wasn't out there obviously so I mean you didn't see it on race 22 well, so you know I, I wasn't I, out there yeah, great reporting there y'all really oh, top notch level you wow. know what I think <laughs> I, you know one thing that I think makes you great see is see don't give a damn I mean, I think that's one thing to well, be. I, I, I care what my wife says. That's I, I, damn I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean it that way. <laughs> that, and she says keep different racing. Different Remember scenario. That. Different scenario. Yeah, different get, set of rules. Get that frame, please. No, <laughs> I, I think that's one of the things that, that, that makes you be able to do the things you do, right? I mean, I think you are trying to impress yourself and come up with your own, you, you know, meet your own goals and the things that you need. And I think sometimes there's. There's a lot of good to that. I think it's easy here to get caught up in the wash like we were talking about before. There's there's so many people with so many different ideas or so many different ways to try to push you that who knows whether they're right, wrong, or indifferent. You kind of just go to your own drum and do the things that you want to do and screw them. You know, that's the way it works. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times, I mean, not not revealing setup secrets or whatever, but... You know, everybody down here is all about, you know, all the, you know, you know, just skew it, you know, you, you know, get the truck arms, you know, hundred holes split, you know, that, that's what, that's what it's going to take to freaking win the race, you know, and I ain't never had no damn luck with that. I mean, right. my, my truck arms, you know I mean? They, they stay in the freaking bottom hole or the top hole and they stay even. So, I mean, honestly, so, I mean, I just, I love it. That's awesome. Jeez. Uh, Lloyd said, not funny, but enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Nah, he's a good guy. He really trained our Ben Rhodes kid really well. For sure, for sure. He he did, and, you know, he's working with Corey Heim now, obviously, and uh, I guess he's – I don't know if he's full-time with them or not, but he's full-time with their racing. I don't know if he's full-time with them otherwise. But, I mean, another really good kid. Obviously surprised us all last Stupid year. Stupid fast. For sure. Stupid for sure. fast. No uh, no doubt about that. You've uh, you, you've won the Hamlin. You, you've won the Heat. Um, Three times. 
I was going to say four. I, wow. I, my math was off. <clears throat> no, his um, wasn't. <clears throat> he, he was he was hoping. Well, yeah. maybe this year. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> um, you won Martinsville. What what what's next? I mean, what what are you trying to accomplish now? Are Fourth you, of July at Sobo. Fourth of July. That's what I was going with with my five year. I mean, like, what else do you want to do? Where where are yeah. you gonna where are I mean, you gonna go from here? I mean, here? yeah, Myrtle Beach would be cool, but man. Like, Myrtle Beach in 13 was really, really cool because we were, like, getting after it. And I don't know if it was, like, you know, when they put VHT on it or whatever. But we were, mm -hmm. like, from from lap 100 on, we were getting after it. And that was, like, so much fun racing with, um, like, BJ Mackey and Alex and, and all those guys. Um, but now it's just such a ride-along race. I really don't have no desire to, to do it. I mean, they all run four, three wide. And, you know, and then they, you know, somebody, you know, screws up or whatever, hits a rumble strip, and they crash like it's freaking Talladega. I mean, I just, <laughs> yeah. I don't have no use for it. And it's and I tell everybody, I mean, it, once they get racing in November, I don't like racing because it gets way too cold. I mean, it's it's miserable. You always see all the tweets and Facebook and stuff. It's like, why are we here? It's so cold. And I'm like, I'm in my house, and it's really nice. So you guys should <laughs> come hang out and drink a beer. But I mean, I honestly, it. I don't I don't, ha I don't have to. I mean, that's that's a big thing. I mean, I'm not sit there and you know slave to it. So like I said, I'm gonna go race when I want to and when I have fun. Weather down there is hit or miss. I've been there when it was snowing, and I've been there yes. when it was hot as hell. I mean, sometimes we go run to the outlets and buy more coats. Yes, the outlet <laughs> yeah. being close. At is least a it's big close win. by. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not like Kenley where it's just the middle of nowhere. <laughs> right, you got nothing. Yeah, no doubt about that. <clears throat> uh, Kyle Manch said that uh, C won Daytona pretty much too. So oh. he's a fan. Yeah. Kyle's a good dude, man. Definitely. <clears throat> hell of a fabricator, awesome. dude. Yeah, hell of a fabricator. I agree with you on that, hundred percent. Would. Uh, and I already know the answer to this question. I don't even really so know. So why are you I'm asking questions, I'm just going to ask it anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to ask it anyways. Had you won Daytona, would Martinsville still have been bigger for you? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, Daytona had been cool. I mean, granted, but. Yeah. What is the, uh, you know, but. The onesie. You know, but, I mean, like I said, you got 80-something guys show up every, I mean, every yeah. year in Martinsville with, with all their best stuff. I mean, every, I mean, every year we all get two weeks to get ready. Yeah, and you know the month before yeah, that's that, when everybody... the rules come out. It's two weeks before. <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, everybody gets their motors freshened up. You know, I mean, everybody everybody what, goes full bore. What a unit! What a anyway. unit! What a specific rule system set across the board for all of late model stock car racing. If we were to follow it, circa twenty years ago, when here was the rule book, and then every NASCAR track followed it, do you think that would help or hurt the divide between Virginia and North Carolina? I mean, I, I mean, it would have to help. I mean, I, I thought that was a, you know, I don't agree with Langley Austin very much, but your idea of just making lightning or somebody the, the head honcho it, right? and, and, you know, whether it's cars tour or whether it's race 22 rules or, you know, Roger Johnson rules or whatever, just one set and, and say, you know, this is what we're, what's, what, I mean, they just had New Smyrna, you know, in NASCAR, I mean, I've been an NASCAR guy for a long time, and, you know, they, they do a lot for the points and, you know, points right. program and stuff. But, I mean, they, their crown jewels now New Smyrna, and Bo Parr won the championship. I, where's his rule book? I mean, it's Ricky Brooks, right? I mean, it's That's all, right. it's all yep. CRA right. and, yep. and yeah. Snowball and all that stuff. So who's, who's really to say why do we have to, you know, why do we have to keep playing this game? You know, right. why, why can't we just have our own deal? I mean, I get it, you know, we're, we're paying money to it, but so is – Keith Rocco in Connecticut, and, and there's you know, no rule book for him. And you know, my buddy Chris Klein in Las Vegas. I mean, they're running straight rail cars out there. Right. So, I mean, but they're all accumulating NASCAR. I mean, NASCAR points. When I mean, shoot, when the points come out, Bo Powers got the most points in the country. <laughs> right. You know, right. I mean, honestly, right. And for real. That's you know, right. he could be the NAS. You know, if you really wanted to, I don't know why he would, but you know, he could be the NASCAR champion if he wants to. Um, yeah. So, like I said, but the rules. I, I say one thing about the rules. They need to stop coming out in February. They need to come out. Yes. Like you guys were talking about it. You yes. know, they, everybody, everybody kind of has their powwow meetings. You know, this is when Martinsville was four days long. You know? Yeah. Right. And I understand it. I wish it still was. I, I don't. There's more <laughs> hotel rooms every night. I, I understand. Come on, Craig. Hey, it was good for me. Yeah, yeah but yeah, then I you could have tried that gear. You had enough time to try that gear. You said you didn't have time to try. Yeah, but all them other guys could have tried all that other <laughs> trick shit they had lined up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it really whooped my ass. So. Um, but no, I mean, like I said the, the rules they they de they got to come out. It used to be for a while there they they came out right after the banquet or after PRI. Yeah. They literally came out like the Tuesday before like clock Tuesday after like clockwork. Yeah. And I mean we're you know my my guys Doodle and Aaron, you know they're trying to build a motor for this year. They you know they rented my motor from Martinsville and 
you know, they're trying to figure out what to do. And I was like, well, we need to wait for the rules to come out. That seems like a logical thing, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, then the week after PRI came and went. And then January 1st went. And then it was like January 10th. All right, we got some rules. And it's like, you know, all right, Rayvon, what are we going to do? And he's like, we got to order pistons. And, they're, you know, they're going to take five weeks. And it's like, right. well, shit, we ain't going to be able to test or nothing. We're just going to dive right into it. So, I mean, that, that's that's my that's my, you know, rant right there is just you know we gotta get a, we gotta have a plan and get them out and the racers need to start being involved i mean there's no reason why me or hc sellers or um roger or jay or you know the head tech guy dominion whatever you know there's got you know the racetracks i mean I, granted that they, they know a lot what's going on but I mean, a lot of those people don't know what the hell they're talking about on the spindle deal. They've never even seen them. Right. Well, I think it's where we're at with the spindle deal is nobody. And, and I talked to two different tracks about this, and they actually thought that that was the same spindle that the Nelson cars had on them, <laughs> when in reality it wasn't. wasn't. The one that, you know, that has now been illegal, the one that Jay Hedgecock sells, you know, which really ain't illegal, but that's a whole other conversation. But they really didn't know. They, they had no clue. And when I explained it to them, and, and you know it's bad and, when i got to explain rules to somebody. it doesn't have to be their job to know either. Right. I mean, they're, they're there to promote the race, to right. promote the drivers. I mean, they're, you know, they're supposed to be, you know, setting up a watermelon eating contests and, you know, right. trying to figure out what the next big thing is, where it's, you know, you know, fantasy cast for, you know, picking drivers or, right. you know, all, you know, whatever, promoting the race. They shouldn't be worried about the rules and sitting there, you know, worry about what we're doing. Right. I, I agree totally. I mean, there should be. I mean, granted, you don't want to place. put your customer out. I mean, at the end of the day, we are customers. We all right. go to racetrack. We spend a lot of money to get into the gate and and compete. But, think, but we are putting on the show. And but yeah. racetrack's got two customers. That's the one thing I think that we always forget, right? Like, so they have the customer of the racer that's helping provide the show, and then they have the customer of the fan. So, I mean, without one, there's not another. So I, I think that brings an intriguing point to it too, though. Well, and he's saying that they should be focused on the fans, and, I, I and they should have somebody Agreed. who's focused. I, I agree on with you. I, I, you I just think I'm, I'm not saying like, oh, you know, I, I don't even go in the pit area or nothing. I still right. think you need to go down and co- sure. talk to your customer and find out, hey, what are your problems? Like, right. oh, that spindle is your problem. I'll go, you know, I'll try to handle it for you. But yeah. you know, at the same time, like us as racers need to, you know, have a voice in this deal. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely. Um, couple- Instead of Facebook, God, if Facebook right. is just... I, I agree with that. It's terrible. I mean, I know it's gives for a lot of clicks for, you know, for the, for the brand there, but, <laughs> right. you know, right. I just, um, you know, it's going to, it's going to kill it, man. It really, it really right. can. It really can. I don't, uh, I don't disagree with you. And I'm not going to say that necessarily Facebook was good for us because everybody used to go to our homepage on the website and then go to whatever story was on there. Now, almost nobody goes on the homepage yeah. and they go straight to the stories. I'm, I'm ready to put them power yeah. rankings out like clockwork, man. And now, you know, I don't know what you do during the day. So I go to I don't know Walmart what I do and during try to find either. Lynn Carroll and, you know, <laughs> I'm searching, I'm searching, searching with a microphone him. or something. <laughs> making memes. He's making memes. <laughs> hey, you know, that's, that's something that I really want to get into is making memes and, uh, you know, how uh, the uh, the ESPN NFL pages and stuff, is they make those things. GIF or just yeah. peanut butter, I, so it's a gift. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know I, either. I don't know. I said memes. So I don't know. I, I didn't, you know, voice my opinion on that one because I don't have a clue. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be. But I do know one thing for sure. Uh, your wife chimed in again, and uh, you're headed to Chick-fil-A to get her some nuggets when this is over. Come on. So, wow. 12-pack. That is uh, one thing we do know for sure. She doesn't uh, like Chick-fil-A sauce. Well, I don't either, so. What's smart, wrong with you? Smart lady. Come on. What do you like? What kind of sauce do you like? Barbecue sauce, man. Oh. It's like the same thing. No, it's not. It tastes a little better. No. Come not. on, Craig. It's not. I don't know. This, well, this went wrong. I don't know. We're definitely going in the wrong direction yeah, with Chick-fil-A here. <clears throat> so, uh, Lloyd Gardner char- chiming in with. Oh, uh, now, 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 with, his, now his fingers can't stop typing. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, he's chiming in with a comment about Lynn Carroll that we won't repeat. Yeah. Uh, so, but. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, we better uh, digress from there. I'm I have repeated those words, but I should. <laughs> <laughs> I have repeated those words, but not, not openly. Uh, a- absolutely, absolutely. Uh, speaking of motor mile, we were talking about earlier. <clears throat> Uh, what do you think about the way that they're going to set the field for the races? You know, that's a you know fan aspect, but obviously for the racers, racers, you know, the majority of them aren't exactly thrilled about it. What, what's your impression of what they're actually doing? Because I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what they are doing. Um. I know, I know we're not having qualifying. We're not having a traditional qualifying. We're just going off of practice speeds for second round. And the original I- intention was just to do a 
draw yeah. from there to start the first race. Right. And I had I had said in the meeting that I didn't really like the draw because you're I mean yeah it's all the chance and everybody's got the same opportunity but you know look I mean you're gonna have guys that are gonna run up front and you're gonna have guys that you know are, are gonna finish you know eighth or tenth you know right. it's just speeds of cars you know especially up there I mean the variation in speed in cars up there is really big so I w- I would almost rather have you know an invert more than yeah. anything I just agree. so like. You know, if I do go up there and race against Repco or Mike Looney or Philip mm-hmm. Morris or Lee Pulliam or whatever, you know, if we're all in the same batch, you know, then we we can all start the race in the same batch too. Right. I mean, no, nobody should be able to just to pull a one like, oh, it's my lucky night, you know. I mean, I can yeah. just go run the tires off this thing and, and, and win 50 laps. And, and, you know, that's not fair to nobody. So, I mean, yeah. I, it would be way cooler to see, you know, Philip and me and Lee and Looney and Repco all start, you know, 10th through 7th or whatever yeah. and, and – and all try to, you know, beat each other and then also trying to, you know, get to the front, you know I mean? I would think yeah. that'd be a way better show than, you know, than, you know, me getting the pole and, you know, all them other guys starting, you know, 10th or whatever, and there's no show there. I mean, granted, you can watch one guy get through the field, but wouldn't it be cooler to see three or four of them have to? Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, but I, like I say, what have you... I don't know that they finalized it. I don't know that they've ever put anything out, you know, finalizing that. Uh, so now my, giving my understanding was that they were going to do the and bucks away, which is yep. pretty cool. Yeah, I do. Then, I like that. You know, um, and then the first time winner bonus and stuff like that. But, yep. you know, there, there again, you know, I, I've voiced my opinion in the meeting that, you know, the whole point of doing the two tire deal was so you could pay a little bit more, more money to start. And that way the guy, you know, everybody just wants to go and pay for the bills and, and, and not leave so freaking broke, you know, before they started, you know. Right. And I think that's the attraction at South Boston is a guy can buy two tires and he can buy his fuel and buy his pit passes. And, you know, then I, he's he's kind of broke even, you know. I mean, he had, he had a great time and, you know, you got to pay for that too. So, I mean, you know, you kind of get to ride for free, you know, with, you know, change your motor and stuff. And, um, you know, I – that's the that, one that, thing I seem to hear from almost all racers, and that's become more to the forefront, I think, here in the last little bit, is they don't they give you their cost per event to race now to where they've got it figured out that I only lost 250 to go race, or I only lost 400 to go race. Yeah, you still got to go race. Right, and, and right. I, I think that's the biggest difference that I'm starting to see where people are like, man, if I could just do this and – I just not get crushed when I leave the racetrack, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm willing to let you stab me one time. I'm just not really willing to let you hit me with a club yeah, to where mean, I'm incapacitated. Look, right? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sitting there counting up like, oh, you know, my dually, you know, right? Lo- sure, lo- sure. Lost, you know, seventy five dollars that week, so yeah, you know, I got to add that, you know, get right. that back in my purse money. But you know, for most guys, they want to pay for their tires, pay for the gas, pay for the pit passes, and if they run well, they feel like they get all that paid for. Some racetracks don't do that, you know. Okay. I mean. If you finish in the top ten at a, at a late mile stocker race, you should be able to pay your bills leaving the racetrack. Right. And for some racetrack, that's not the case. Right. I mean, that was always when I was at Franklin County. You know, total different scale. We run used tires and all this other stuff, so we were saving money. But that was my goal. You know, at the end of the night, I wanted to know, and I talked to racers every week. Well, how much did you spend this week? Well, how much did you get back? You know, I wanted to know these numbers so that every week I could tweak it and. Much to my wife really hated it because I'd go up on the purse every week, seemed like, you know. So, but, you know, but it was working. It was working in the right direction because it was allowing racers to say, you know what, I'm not going to just lose my butt to go here, you know. Yeah. And I think that's the thing South Boston's done the best of anybody is they've made it to where you're not just going to go in and you're not just going to lose everything that you've spent. Absolutely. I think that's how we get the car count back, to be really honest with you. I, th- but, I think you know, people I mean, are willing to spend the money. The argument too that, you know, they're, they're not really, you know, they're owned by, you know. Sure. You know, owned by Pocono. I mean, they, 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 you know, they have a little bit more leeway than some of these other racetracks. That, sure. Like, you know, Kevin trying to make it every day at Hickory. I mean, they, right. he's fighting a different battle than those people Totally are. different. So, but. But there's nothing standing in a guy who's fighting that battle's way of lowering the cost to the racer. There's nothing standing in the way. You don't necessarily have to go up on the purse yeah. to make it even out. You can lower their cost. That's only, that's a, you know, I was going up on my purse a little bit here and there, you know, a couple hundred dollars, but the main thing I was doing was cutting the racer's expense. I mean, one thing the car store has done really well, I mean, and I don't know why any local racetrack doesn't do this, but if you got guys coming there, I mean, granted, most, you know, seasons are 18, 20 races, right? All right, mm-hmm. and a lot of them become twins now. So a lot sure. of them are putting 13, 14 nights. If someone's there for seven or eight nights, what, why wouldn't you give them a pit pass? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> seriously. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, show them that you, you know, I mean, granted, you have a awards banquet, but I mean, I won a championship three years in a row, and I got a thousand bucks. I mean, I mean, we weren't doing it to win a championship. I mean, we were we were there to race, but um, I, I don't know, man. You know, there's got to be some type of, you know, you know, you give to us, we're gonna give back. You know, we're we're gonna buy you a set of tires right. at the end of the year or something like that. Kind of like car store does, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. Yeah, but from from like Kevin's side of the fence or another one, you gotta. And I'm not, I'm not pro or con this, but you you gotta think that th- those guys still too have. They're trying. to... Well, the rent's still the same, right? right? They're, they're the, the rent's still the same in December. And, and as you know, it is the one in, thing that know, I find with July. the racer, if if you, from being in the business of interacting with the racer and, and working with him. He tries to beat me every time he comes in, all of them. Sure. And, and I walked the, in the Jays and I was like, "So we're, what's the Martinsville discount?" Right, <laughs> right, right. And I don't mean that. Right, that's what that's kind of the game that is played. I just I don't know how far you can split the needle before it. You, you know, because the more that you give, the more that people expect from you to give, and then yeah. how far does that needle swing one way or the other? You well, know, people take advantage of it too. You know, absolutely. But like I said, I you know. There's got to be something for the racer showing up to your racetrack I every agree. single week. I agree. You know, Supporting then, you. Then just have banquet to pay, you know, for you to pay $45 to go attend to. Right, right. You know? well, one of the things that, and I think this will eventually be the way that a racetrack does this, because everything's going to have to be electronically done for them to keep up with it without just spending an enormous amount of time. But when I went to Southern National, you know, with Michael Diaz, you know, one of the things that I tried to, we tried to implement and just never got done was doing a loyalty card, kind of like, you know, I don't know. I don't know who does them, but uh, different businesses, movie theaters and such, they like do a loyalty card cards, and they give you free this, free that over time, and you just earn stuff. Yeah. And that was one of the things that I wanted to implement. I'm just not sure it's going to take some big racetrack to bring that to the forefront, such as a South Boston, and to have that type of program, and then the other racetracks can kind of follow and, and figure out a way to do it. Well, I mean, I know South Boston, I mean, I don't know about Motor Mile, but I know South Boston and Langley, when they do have, you know, South Boston every week, but Langley, I'm not sure, but. You know, they have their own rates for hotel rooms and stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not quite advertised all that great, but, you know, they do have that deal going. But, you know, it, it could be a lot bigger. You know, it really could. I mean, it, people could really spend some time with it and make it really cool. Right. I mean, and that's one thing racetracks are struggling with today is finding a way to advertise. You know what I mean? Because while I think Race 22 is a great, you know, platform for them to advertise <laughs> in certain ways, obviously. Yeah, but it's you the know, only one, really, well, that but, they use. But the thing about it is – it's not going to target a non-race fan, and you eventually right. got to get non-race fans to come in to have new race fans. Well, they got they got to do new things like the you know NASCAR this weekend spent a bunch of money with that Barstool Sports guy. Yeah, yeah. And that that was a good move. That was a really good move. They, they I mean they had like a ten percent increase in or no, it was like thirty two percent increase in, um, you know whatever the Nielsen rating or whatever mm-hmm. is in Boston. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, for right. Daytona, right? And it's 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 because of that guy. Oh, right. for sure. I mean, I mean, he's he's the king of there. So, um, you know, like I said, and then you know him putting out you know the 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 lines, and I read one of them I was going through the comments, or whatever. You know, they they put up Matt Debonetta was like you know five hundred to one, and some some guy says I never watched a NASCAR race, but damn it, Paul Menard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, and he's like he doesn't know who Paul Menard is from Adam, but you know, I mean, he, he you know he had money on Matt to to try to win the race, and he was rooting for that guy, and that's what it's going to take to to get fans into you know root for CE and root for Greg Edwards and Philip and you know all those guys to you know whether you go to the you know, the fan club and fill out a card. And if you get the top five right and 10th play, right, you get, right. you know, a free ticket next week or free French fries or something. I mean, that's, that's what it's going to take to get people involved and in, 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 into the race. Well, I, I can't say many good things about Mike Daly when he was at ACE, but I can say that's one thing that he did implement that I thought was a fantastic deal. He, I don't know if you had to buy a card or you got a card when you came in or you got extra cards by buying them or whatever it was, but you pick, like, the finishing order of the race. And if they're in the exact same order, you win a big prize. And yeah. if they're in any order, just that same top five, you win a prize. And if you get any of them right, you get some sort of prize. I thought that was great. Yeah. I mean, like I say, you got to get the fan. Causing engagement, the, right? It's getting right. people engaged. Yeah, you got you got to keep them wanting more. 
Like, oh, man, I was this close this week. I got to come back and try to get it, you know? Yeah. So. You, you mentioned the guy betting on, on the race. I mean, I think that's something that I think it'll could come. be very interesting for short track racing, and I don't know who will be the first racetrack to yeah, do it. Yeah, believe and, me, I'm not a legality lawyer there, but, you know, it's it's going to come, and I would people, love it. people need to embrace it. I hope I own the racetrack that it happens <laughs> I, I 100% do. It, I hope right. I own the racetrack that it happens I mean, I, I mean You're going to have to buy one first. Look, I can buy a $100,000 car all day long, but trying to bet on a sports event, I, I will shake my knees to death. I mean, I, I that's you need why to get I Jeff Holly's help. Apparently, he <laughs> wins every year i'm not really sure <laughs> the king of draft games right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man I wish uh, they had that at motor mile i mean they didn't yes. have a, um i mean i don't think you won money but you know you um well, i mean maybe you did win money at the end of the year but i don't remember they, what you, you got to pick drivers and stuff i thought that was really cool like the first week i wasn't on there i was like how come i didn't get on there like i was pissed <laughs> yeah. i was like what's my dollar value worth you know I mean, that, that, that really meant a lot to me <laughs> well yeah what was your dollar value after you got on there i, I don't know you don't remember? Yeah. Not nearly as good as Phillips. <laughs> no, Le- <laughs> Levo was I, – no, I think I remember it was like, yeah, like 50 bucks to pick like five drivers, yeah. and Levo was like $35. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it was like you got you burning up your whole picks on him, but he was worth it at the time. <laughs> Wes Farrell uh, actually won that fantasy for that year, I believe. And uh, I, I think he may be on here. He I remember Derek here. Lancaster's brother texted me, Scott, and was like – Dude, you should. Why weren't you on there? Like, I, I could have bet on you and done really good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's. Those are all good things. It's all things that it, the biggest challenge for racetracks, I believe, is their advertising of it. And I'm not advocating for any of them to advertise on Race 22. I'm advocating for them to actually advertise somewhere else because I think they need to bring in people who aren't necessarily on. Doc race needs to make that like a soundbite so you can just like insert it in there. <laughs> huh. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's my wife's job to make the sales, so I ain't gotta. <laughs> That's not my problem, so if we don't sell Dang, anything. you're really passing the buck on her, aren't you? Well, I mean, you know. You, you, you want to eat for free and everything. You <laughs> might her do all the work. <laughs> That's just the way the whole thing works. You should see it. She's here early, cleaning up, doing all this stuff. Yeah. He's sitting out in the parking lot talking on his phone. Right, right. Well, I mean, there's some truth to that, so <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not going to argue with that. I mean, hey, I, I, I mean, that, that's one thing. I mean, it's like this radio show. I mean, if it wasn't for Doc, you know, and, and Roger, what they bring to the table, there's no way that we would be able to make this happen. I mean, it's just like your race team. I mean, yeah. if it wasn't for Doodle and your dad and, and all the people that, you know, are involved with you, you wouldn't be able to make it happen, and that's how, you know, Race 22 and everything is. You know, everything in racing comes down to the people working on it and money. Yeah. So that's it. I think that's every aspect of life, probably. So, um, Kyle Manch uh, chiming in here, uh, talking to Roger. He said uh, said that Roger lets him wait till payday to pay for his parts, and uh, he said he thinks he feels sorry for his poor ass sometimes. So. Uh, he tries. It. He's got a lot going on, man. He <clears throat> tries to do a lot more stuff than he needs to. I think most people out there are just thinking, man, you mean I can get parts and ain't got to pay for them? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, no. You're gonna yeah. get a lot of free parts going out of here tomorrow. <laughs> no, that's not the way it works. Hey, I am. He's been I am doing impressed. That a long time. I am impressed that there's you know at least another car in here being worked on this week. Actually, yeah, two. I, I don't believe. want any more to come in uh, right now. I, I'm telling you, it looks like Walmart after christmas back there <laughs> black friday uh, yeah dude yeah. I, i'm like i i legitimately all the guys this morning we were standing around kind of talking all together trying to formulate a game plan for the week and i said man i hope nothing comes in just because we can't get parts built up enough you know we're getting ready to go into race season and you know we're down on lowers and and i learned that we've sold everything we had and we just don't have anything else and i i i want to get it for you but i can't i i mean i i just I'm trying as fast as possible. So, yeah, I hope more stuff. I, I would like a week where nobody came in, <laughs> where we could just weld. Well, you better get caught up on the parts because that Greenville 10,000 to win limited that, races, you're probably going to need no, some today. And that's been the big thing, right? That was the big, If you were in here today, there was nothing but sparks and grinders and welding yeah. going on everywhere just because, you know, hard parts are becoming scarce right at this moment. Parts in general are becoming scarce in this moment, I think. This is the one year that I can really, really recall that, you know, almost every manufacturer is out of parts. You know, we, we always have those small dilemmas where... Yeah, I mean, I, I went to Jay's last week because I got my car clipped, you know, for the year. And there was a, there was a car on every jig. Yep. There was three of them inside. And there was three getting bodies put on in the other shop. I mean, there, there's two outside waiting to, to come back come in so yeah i mean i think it is it is live and well i mean I, you know a lot of people want to hate on it but you know we had 80 something we had 80 something cars in martinsville 
and they have 47 for the Snowball Derby. Absolutely. And they race right. those cars in 47 sure. freaking states. Yes. Right. 47 states they run those cars. Yep. And, you know, like I said, I know, they, I mean, they're tweaking their program. They're, you know. Yeah. I think everybody's having to, you know, change things around. There's a challenge for everybody. And that's one thing that I wanted to mention on this show is talking to different people, you know, talking to you, Roger, and talking to different racetracks and and different people and seeing some of the people who I've seen that have posted pictures of cars and such that's coming back racing that haven't been racing in a couple of years. While we focus a lot on the challenges because we want the conversation to be going so that we fix those problems, and there's a lot of upside going on right now. I mean, there's a lot of good things going on. I agree. I I mean – I can't believe the the one thing that I I can't believe that I, that I want everybody to know that I I I didn't know really until the last two weeks is how many cars have come back into circulation. There was a lot of cars that I haven't personally seen. Oh yeah, you showed me that one guy's car. Right, from, right. From I mean, that was right. It was whatever. twenty years old, right? Like you're <laughs> that. That's what's amazing to me for for a, a big set of years there. We didn't see any of those guys, and we didn't see a lot of those cars, and and now you're. You're you're starting to see them coming back. You're seeing a new group of people that, you know, they own their own business or they are the guy that has a small deal and he's he's wanting to get back in. And and I kind of I've been talking to many of them and it's amazing how their thought process is different because they're just doing it for fun. And I like it. And I don't mean that they're just doing it for fun that they don't care if they win or that they lose, sure. but. I like the fact that a lot of these people are new and going into it without a big expectation. They're they're not the guy that says, "Hey, I need to spend ten thousand today, and then tomorrow you're not going to see me." Hey, I like this. I like to do this a while. I like to, maybe a couple of years. I'd like to. So they're realistic about what their goals are, but yet they're still generating money into the yeah, sport. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I have seen a lot more people though. They do buy you know a pretty nice car, you know, and then they run it for a half a year, and it doesn't quite you know pan out. And, you know, they're, they're still trying to figure it out and all that stuff. And they're trying to figure out the car and, you know, they're kind of running out of time to do it. You know, I mean, life gets in the way. So, oh, but, for sure. But, you know. But that's in anything, right? Life gets in the way in anything. I think if you if you let it, you, you've sacrificed like hell to be able to do what you do, you know. I mean, I, I think that's part of the what makes it great. If you don't sacrifice all them hours, Martinsville means nothing. And I don't mean that as a dog. I mean, it, yeah. is that's kind of the payoff at the end of the goal, right? You. That's what you hope. I mean, yeah. that's why, that's why no, you, but that's keep, what you keep continue to go it. back, right? When yeah. when do you stop? You can't tell me that there hasn't been some part. Well, maybe not in Martinsville because that's the thing that we would all like to win. But there has to be some times where you're like, man, it's 2 in the morning. What am I doing? Right? I got to be at this auction tomorrow. Uh, I got to do this. That was got... 2008 for me, man. With 2007, I was kind of, you know, got our own family car and started racing. And we were racing South Boston every week and running against Adam Barker and uh, Wayne Ramsey. And Philip would show up every now and then. And. You know, it was tough, and we got a win that year, and we run really good and finished fourth in points. You know, David Triplett, he was awesome there, Eddie Johnson. And then 2008, I ran second nine times. I'm like, what the hell do I have to do to win? <laughs> right, mean, but that's – you say 2008, right? 2008. And I think that's something for the young guys too, right? So CE, 2008 is talking about he won one race then, and now he's talking about winning – grinding eight years through a bunch of crap to be able to not, not that you didn't win races in between then but to be able to get to your goal which well, was winning it'd be 10 years i'm your sorry math's a little off 10 to it's 18 when you, i'm sorry <laughs> it's late yeah it's not that late for me it is i mean i get up I'm at old. noon so it's not yeah. that late. <laughs> yeah but you don't get up <laughs> that oh, God, yeah yeah i was on the road at freaking seven o'clock this morning yeah, personal problems. I yeah, understand. right. First world problems. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, anything uh, that you thought we'd talk to you about tonight or that you wanted to talk about tonight that we haven't got to? Um, I think the other week you were talking to Josh and Bobby, you know, about, you know, I guess, you know, do do people come up and talk to you and stuff? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I like I said, I, and I chimed in that night and I said, you know, Jamie Caldo really helped me at yeah. Kenley that Oh, night. the mentorship when yeah, we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um I think a lot of more of it's coming around, you know, especially with the social part of it and, you know, Instagram and DMs and shit like that. But, you know, um, I think it happened a little bit more, you know. Um, I think I think people just need to talk to each other and, you know, realize that we're not – I mean, yeah, we might be big, scary, you know, car numbers on the racetrack, but, you know, we're, we're, all, we're all regular guys. We're all here trying to, you know, grind it out. I mean, if you need a drive shaft, I'll go look at my trailer and see if I got one for you. Right. Um, you know, people have given me plenty of things. I try to, you know, I don't. I don't even think it's the parts. I don't think what people need from you for this to be successful is the parts. I really don't. I think people need from you the guidance and the stuff that you've done that nobody knows about. Well, it's like you know, this year, 
Butterbean was having a, you know, they were parked next to us and they were having an issue with their car and, you know, we were kind of getting a good spot. My dad's like, go talk to Phil and see what the hell they got going on. Their, sh- their car looks like shit. And I went over there and, you know, we tried to grind it out and try to work on it, but, um, I was like, man, I don't know what to do. I mean, you got that other car ready to go? I was like, yeah. I was like, you better go get it, man. Something's up with this thing. So they went and got their car, and they outqualified me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, man, that backfires every time. Yeah, so, man, I shouldn't talk to nobody. But, you know, like I said, I, you know, I enjoy racing. It's it's a lot of fun. I've I've made a lot of great friends out of it. You know, you know, people may not like me or whatever, but um, I, I think I've gained a lot more friends that I've lost. And, uh, like I said, it's a great sport. I mean, it's, it's a tough barrier to entry for sure, but – um, I, I wouldn't give it up for nothing. I, I really learned a lot of things about myself and, uh, you know, work ethic and things like that that nobody can ever take away from me. N- no one's liked by everybody, so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's haters for Not everybody. even Langley. <laughs> oh, I got enough haters. I can go ahead and tell you. I get messages from them all the time. <clears throat> That's how you know you're winning. I, I guess. I ain't won nothing yet. Um, <clears throat> but I'm trying, so. Um, <clears throat> no, nah, I think we covered it. I mean, like you said, man, I'm glad we didn't we talk spent. about the spindle picture. <laughs> That's all you, dog. You want me to dive into that? You can dive into well, that. Well, no, I see. I didn't. I didn't mean it as dogged as it meant. I see, and I, and I talked about it some off air the other day. It wasn't meant as a dig, as much as uh, I want people to realize that you were, you know, trying to do as much. As, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I wish you just sent that to me. What's that? That picture. What picture? I, whatever picture we're talking about. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> you talking about the Kyle Bush picture? Yeah. It's on Twitter. No, it's it's there it. for the whole world to see. I, know, I don't think I follow you. That's dumb. <laughs> that was I'm insulting. Kidding. I'm kidding. That was almost insulting <laughs> right there. You really can't worry about every troll, can you? Uh, right. <laughs> wow. I, wow. That was insulting. No, I, said, I couldn't oh, resist. How do you hate on a man and not even follow no, his so stuff? I, mean, I think it's a really cool picture. I mean, you don't you don't really see nothing. I mean, everybody's seen a Will, black Willwood hub. Everyone's seen an upper control arm. I mean, yeah. I mean, I just thought it was really cool that the dude, Kyle, freaking put it to P1. And he jumped out, and he grabbed, you know, the longest level I've ever seen at the racetrack and, <laughs> and started measuring his oil pan. And I'm like, dude, you got, like, 10, 100 people over there, like, you know, all from your – that all work for you. Like, they could probably measure it for you. And he, he jumped in there and measured it, you know. Yeah. I mean, he was sitting there trying to get better himself. I was like – I mean, that's why those guys are the real deal. I mean, Denny and Kyle, I mean, they make a lot of money for a reason. I mean, they are good at what they do. And um, Absolutely. I got to remember that every time I try to race against them, but – you know, like I said, I just thought it was cool. I mean, I wasn't trying to do nothing else. I mean, you, I mean, you were trying to imply that like, oh, the whole spindle gate started with me, and it's like you can't even see there's a damn spindle <laughs> on the car. I mean, it, it, you see an upper ball joint, I a actually, lower ball joint. You but, can't. But the one you thing I tell if it was for a Pinto or I don't think you're giving Oldsmobile. yourself enough credit though. I do think that a lot less people actually knew about that than anybody thinks. I think that this stuff's been around longer than. Anybody really had the idea? Of, I just I think gotta it get just Twitter on the, more. Get I on think Twitter it just comes more. to the forefront through some of these social things, and I think it's great. I mean, you can't see nothing really. I mean, really, it's really a black hub. I mean, it, so I mean, I, like I said, I don't <laughs> see the big deal. I just thought it was cool. The guy jumped under the car, but he did get his hat and sunglasses first. But. <laughs> he's allowed. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's allowed. Here, here's a interesting question for you, Matt Light chiming in. He wants to know if you're still a Larson fan. Nope. I figured as much. I mean, I wouldn't be. I mean, I don't know what will happen if I find him like behind a Best Buy one day. I'm not sure. But, <laughs> you know, I well, don't really. I don't. Mm-hmm. He actually, uh, my in-laws live somewhere in Mooresville, and uh, I mean, they were getting ready to move out, but he bought the house across the street from them. I wow. thought it was really funny. <laughs> it's like, man, when you when life like really comes at you, like it comes it comes really hard. Comes <laughs> <the> worse. <laughs> I haven't said grind at all. Yeah, Dylan Hauser. You just did that. Well, that was just for him. We have an over under every week on how many times. No, I haven't. I've been. I think he said it once. I don't think you said it. I haven't said it at all. Yeah. I got um, hated on the first week or two about it. Yeah, you saying a grinder doesn't count. I mean, I don't don't remember you saying, like, the grind that much. Yeah, Yeah. no, the first show, I think he. Oh, no, the first two shows, yeah. You you definitely. I just. I think people need to (laughs) work on their stuff. Like, I don't think people understand how much you guys work on your stuff. I get to see them every day. And I can tell you that 50% of my customer base does not understand how hard the top-notch guys work on their stuff. They can't even fathom it. I mean, I tell you one one piece of advice: work on stuff. The easier you make it to work on, the much, the faster you'll go. Because it's so much easier to make changes at the racetrack. I mean, 
look, I mean, some guys can go to the racetrack without testing and things like that and go fast. I can't. I mean, everything, er, 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 can. everything I try, you know, nine out of ten times never works. So, I mean, it, when you spend the extra five minutes to take your die grinder and grind out your, you know, upper control arm slugs and, and make your truck arm slugs fit, you know, fit well and, right. you know, your springs come on and off easy, I mean, that it just adds time. I mean, it, it, people really do not take into consideration their time working on these things. And um, it's a, I, I think that would be so much helpful if, you know, like I said, if you don't have, you know, sitting there running the same shock bolts all year and it's like, oh, I broke one. It's like, well, right. no kidding you broke one. Like, I mean, <laughs> it, there's got to be some type of maintenance in the deal. And right? that's, that's the biggest thing. I, I just want. You can buy all the parts you want. Right. You can buy all the $1,000 spenders you want. <laughs> right. You can buy the best Harrington motor. You can buy the best rear and wherever. But, you know, if you don't sit there and work on it and, you know, get to where you can work on it, you're never going to go anywhere. Right. I think, you know, going back to what you and Roger were talking about a little while ago about um, what you can offer to a young racer, I think the biggest thing that you can offer is, you know, one thing that you mentioned, but not in this context, was how long it took you to win big. You know right. what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's I what mean, I think people think. They could just buy a car and show up and win. Oh, yeah, they don't realize. Does. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've I had two young guys, you know, that, you know, they race at Langley some and they race, you know, other places. They're like, man, I just, you know, I just hadn't really broken out yet. I'm like, well, hey, what do you, what do you mean? He's like, well, I just haven't won yet. And I'm like, well, do you feel like you should have won? I mean, like, where, yeah. where do, you, where do you think like, everybody oh, thinks the best they should have won. Yeah, I mean, like, oh yeah, well he's you know he's spending more money than me or he's got a bigger hauler and and things like that. And you know I don't have no room to judge. I got a big you know toter right. home and all that stuff. But you know at the time it, it was feasible for us. But you know like I said, I mean, I, I really asked the guys like, do you think you should have won a race? And he's, do you think you gave enough effort to do it? I mean, really, I mean, just sitting there you know on your phone two hours you know while the car's sitting on scales, I mean, that's not doing nothing. Right. So, um, that's the biggest piece of ice. I get. Just, just keep working, man. Just keep working. If you, th- if you think you've worked enough, keep working longer. I mean, like Mamba mentality. Yeah, honestly. for sure. Right. Uh, and you know, you're talking about, you know, the mentoring thing. I did have a dad that, uh, called me last week and was like, man, you know, listening to Josh and Bobby, he's like, man, I, I, I told my son that's what he needs to go do. He said, you know, we didn't think that they would even offer us a piece of advice, and, you know, we can message them on Facebook, and they can answer them whenever, you know what I mean? And it, that's, I think that's going to open up some doors for some of these kids to actually learn something. I mean, I, I think if you went up to anybody, you know, instead, instead, you know, not in the middle of practice, but right. I mean, if you really want to, you could, but, you know, but you know, at the at the pit gate, when everybody's waiting to come in, like, hey man, there's talk plenty to you for a of downtime, yeah. right? There's plenty of downtime. You know, after you know, I'll, I'll never forget it, and I think it's a badge of honor on my end. But Lee Pulliam came to me in 2010. He was he just moved up from Limited's mm-hmm. and come up to me. He's like, "What do you do about qualifying?" I'm like, "Man, it, it's just something you got to learn." And um, he was telling me about my car and all that stuff. And now, I mean, he, he's if he's not the greatest, he's the He's right there, one or two, the, the best dri- late mile drivers ever. And right. like I said, I mean, we all start somewhere. And like I said, it's not all sunshine and rainbows from the beginning. And it, it don't matter if you hire Greg Marlowe or Roger Johnson or Sammy Houston or me. It doesn't matter. Right? You know, it, it takes time to figure out. And, you know, just people need to have patience. I think patience is one thing that a lot of people don't have today. I mean, you look, they try to move from, a, you know, mini cup to a late model to a arca car to you know the cup series and they're yep. trying to move so fast that they're yeah. not actually learning anything yeah william byron really ruined it for everybody yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. yeah, literally I like agree. you know six months in every race car and you know right. it dominates but that's not going to happen very everybody's often. the same so yeah that's not going to happen very often and most of them are not going to get that opportunity for that to happen that yeah absolutely so timing and a lot of things played into that all right, well, I guess uh, we're about to wrap it up, but uh, go back, you know, because I know a, pe- a lot of people ask all the time, plans for 2019, so just, you said your first race is at Langley, I believe. Yeah, March uh, March 30th at Langley, um, they have, you know, open at night, so it's yep. always exciting to go back home. Um, the, the showdown, you know, as long as we're invited, but I think we'll be invited, um, we'll go do that, and then we're on the motor mile, and uh, I'm really excited to see what our car does up there, you know, new format, new tires, and things like that. we got a lot of work to do, but uh i got a lot of work to do (laughs) but um you know it should be a great season you know i'm really really looking forward to it you talked about the tires you know being a challenge for you will you get to test many times before motor mile opens probably a weekend before i mean honestly i mean well i mean obviously we'll probably go like the friday before and things like that just 
Um, there's just no time on race day to, to do stuff like that. The, yeah. the shows are getting shorter, and, you know, they yeah. need to be shorter. But, you know, we spend a lot of time on these cars. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and, you know, waste a whole weekend on, you know, banking on 15 minutes of practice to do it. So uh, we'll go on Friday before, like usual, and, and, and practice and see what we got. Well, appreciate you coming on tonight. Absolutely. Yeah, Anytime. Good. Thanks for having me. I mean, it's been a great conversation. I think a lot of information for people, young kids, you know, anybody, you know, aspiring to win Martinsville. I mean, you, <laughs> you know, kind of walked through that. Path. Practice restarts, that's for sure. <laughs> you get a good restart at the end if you're on the outside. I mean, yeah. at Legend Cars, that was probably the biggest thing for me is where I, where I learned how to how to do it. I mean, honestly, I mean, you, you don't have any tack. You just got you and, a, you know, and the, you and then the guy next to you. I mean, that's how you got to do it. So. You listen to the motor and you figure out when to go. Right. A- any parting thoughts from you, Roger? I'm good. I-, I like it. I think it's been good. I can't wait for some of the things that we've uh, been talking about as far as upcoming things, you know, different guests we've been talking about having on and and things like that. I-, I like to just keep the ball rolling. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I like to hear some. I'd like to hear some negative feedback. I know people don't normally ask for that, but... <laughs> Things yeah, we, me too. Things we should do I differently. Negative, Th- just like what, what would you yeah, like to see? But I, yeah, right. I didn't even mean negative. Yeah, what, what would you like to see? What, what were some things that we can that we can put out? Some things that you have questions on, or or whatever. You know, drop it in one of the comments, or or reach out to to me or Langley, or or even see to that matter if if you got some things that you'd like to talk to him about. But you know, use social for what it's for. Try to try to broaden your reach, and if you don't know, ask. That's, that's it. That's, that's I think, the biggest benefit that we can provide each other. Right. Uh, a couple of things that we're working on, you know, for future shows. Uh, we want to do a promoters roundtable. You know, we got the tech people. Definitely. We've got the racers. Definitely. Now we need to get the promoters. We need to get their side. Uh, I've uh, invited a couple of them already. And, you know, it, it's an open invitation. Anybody that wants to come, they want to participate. We're not going to do it over the phone. We'd like to be face-to-face. Yeah, you, you should, know, so we use, can talk to use each this other. platform to make your platform Absolutely. better. I mean, you know, we can – I want to try to share everything that uh, – we do here on the radio show on 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 performance center stuff you know race 22 if if, if you got something you know I, I challenge jay to share it you know just to i'd like everybody to kind of share it as much i'd like to have jay on the show you know just try to get as many people to to start conversations as we can to, to try to get it all worked out the best way we possibly can yeah, and I put on here, and I should have said this from the beginning, but uh, anybody who uh, shared this show, you know, uh, want to, you know, give away, uh, give away a T-shirt. So uh, I'm just looking at the people who, uh, who just make uh, sure that T-shirt guy DMs me or whatever. Yep, so Lee, Lee Jordan, there. Lee Jordan will be hitting you up. I guarantee you. Good. Um, so I will, uh, I will make sure of that. So uh, I'm just looking at the list here. Uh, Landon, Mark Rush t-shirt's yours uh thank you for sharing it and uh every week we'll try to give away uh, a t-shirt or something else yeah, or maybe see you'll get some t-shirts we'll give some of his away yeah. or whatever and uh, we've got some performance center ones coming uh, and some different things so hopefully uh hopefully we'll be able to do that but uh that's going to wrap up uh, this week's show and uh, hopefully next week we'll have uh, just as good a guest oh, i must be going uh so that'll be that'll do it for race 22 radio see you guys next week I'll stay a week or two, I'll stay the summer through, but I am telling you, I must be away.